back in high school we were seated at an examination hall and we were doing this accounting exam you all know how you know uh, you're doing an exam and everyone is quiet and then all of a sudden you just hear someone is like yes it has balanced i mean somebody could not hold in their joy and they just burst out like that in amid is an examination going on and everywhere it's quiet and this person was rejoicing that the accounting number he was doing had balanced it is a very very immense joy by the way if you are a practicing accountant or a student that has been doing accounting for some time you know exactly what i mean that when a number balances something that has been disturbing you it brings a certain kind of joy a joy that surpasses all understanding the bank reconciliation statement as a topic in accounting for students doing accounting is one of those topics that is quite a source of headache you can sit on a number you try to do it and the cash book simply fails to reconcile with the bank statement and you just do not know why in this full lecture on bank reconciliation statement i labor to explain every nitty gritty that you need to know about the bank reconciliation statement i get to start by introducing to you what the bank reconciliation statement is and why it is relevant then i go on to explain why there may be discrepancies between the bank statement and the cash book i then get to the worked examples some of these worked examples are elementary worked examples others are from examination past paper questions i am very confident that if you are watching this entire lecture that by the time you're done watching and not just passively watching but actively practicing what you're learning you should be able to handle any bank reconciliation statement number i therefore officially welcome you to this lecture on bank reconciliation statement my name is Arnold Ranga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. Let's assume that you're running a business and as you're running this business you're definitely maintaining such a thing we call a cash book. The purpose of the cash book is for you to record the amount of money that you're receiving and the amount of money that you're paying from your business. Now, when you look at that cash book closely, there are some two columns. There is what we call the cash column and the bank column. In the cash column is where you're going to write the amount of physical cash that you receive in your business and the amount of physical cash that you pay out of your business. Then there is the bank column. In this bank column is where you're going to record the amount of money you receive in your bank account, which bank account so happens to be in some bank somewhere and also the amount of money that you pay out of your bank account. Now, how do you know the amount of money that you are receiving or are paying out of your bank account? You get that information from the checks. If you receive a check, it means you have received money into your bank account. If you issue a check, it means you're paying money out of your bank account. So that is the basis, basically, you're going to use to record in that bank column. So as you're keeping record of the amount of money that you're getting in, in and out of your bank account, as you're keeping those records in the cash book, in the bank column, the bank is also having its own records of your account. If you want to know the status of your bank account or the transactions that are happening in your bank account according to the bank's records, you request what we call a bank statement. It is on this bank statement that you're able to see the bank's version of records regarding how the transactions are happening or how they are playing out in your bank account. Now, prior to preparing financial statements, you're definitely supposed to get a cash book balance. In an ideal world, the balance that you attain in the bank column of your cash book is supposed to be the same as the balance that you attain in the bank statement because the bank statement is the bank's version of the records of the transactions that are happening on your bank account. So it means that before you uh, actually make the financial statements, an accountant is supposed to request for a bank statement from the bank to compare the balance that is on the bank statement with the balance in the bank column of the cash book to see whether they are the same. And in an ideal world, they are supposed to be the same. but 
in the real world they are often not the same the truth of the matter is that sometimes there are records that take place in the bank account that are not reflected in the cash book for one reason or another and sometimes there are transactions or records that are written in the cash book that are not reflected on the bank statement now because of those discrepancies there is always a mismatch between the bank statement balance and the cash book balance but we are supposed to make financial statements and these balances are supposed to be the same so because we want to make sure that these two are the same we go ahead and investigate why they are not the same the reasons that cause some of these variances will be explained more deeply in our upcoming sessions so the first step that accountants do is to adjust the cash book balance the process of adjusting the cash book balance is simply this that the accountant is going to go ahead and look at the bank statement and look for transactions in the bank statement that are not reflected in the cash book so the accountant will get those transactions in the bank statement and he will go ahead and record them in the cash book when he records them in the cash book it means that the cash book balance is going to be adjusted to a new balance when that cash book balance is adjusted to a new balance it is expected that that adjusted cash book balance is supposed to eventually be the same as the bank statement balance and it is that adjusted cash book balance that we shall go ahead and post to the financial statements in this case to the statement of financial position or call it the balance sheet but hey sometimes even after adjusting the cash book balance you will still find that the cash book balance and the bank statement balance are not coinciding or they are not the same in this case if they are not the same that is when we go ahead and seek to reconcile these balances and that is how we start preparing a document we call the bank reconciliation statement the bank reconciliation statement more like seeks to explain the variances between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance this is just an introductory session into what we call the bank reconciliation statement in this session i am going to simply take you through a very basic overview of how we prepare a bank reconciliation statement then in the upcoming sessions we shall go deeper into the bank reconciliation statement and even do worked examples to illustrate everything that we will be talking about my name is Arnold Ranga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy <music>
So upon request to we'll go ahead and get a record of our bank statement. When we get the record of our bank statement, it is right here. This bank statement, like I have already earlier said, is a record of the transactions that have happened on our bank account. These are the records according to the bank. When you come to the cash book, the cash book is showing the records that show the money that has flown in and out of our bank account according to us. So what we do is that we're going to get the cash book and the bank statement and we're going to compare the two. For example, here we have balance. Remember with the cash book, the debit side means that that's a cash inflow. The credit side means that it's cash outflow. This is cash paid out. This side represents cash that has come into the business. So we had a balance cash in the business at the beginning. So we have 250 there, 250 right there at the balance. Then um, we brought cash into the business, 100. If you compare this to here, yes, we have a deposit of 100. We have a deposit of 100 from Bahije. Then also you come here, we have a deposit from Kato, 190. We also have a deposit from Kato right there, 190. Then you come here, we have money getting out of the business, 65. So you come here. Are you able to see that with money removed out of the business, 65 shillings? And then also here you're able to see that money went out to huge, 175, and you find here 175. So you have seen that according to our bank statement and our cash book, we have ticked off the transactions that are in both sides. These ones were also there. However, um, you realize that on our bank statement, we are seeing that we have a bank credit, Paolo. In other words, this Paolo person went ahead, went straight to the bank and they deposited money direct to our bank account. So when he went to the bank, when Paolo went to the bank and deposited this money to the bank, we were not aware that he actually put money on our account. We only got to know of it when we received this bank statement. This kind of transaction is what we call a direct credit. In other words, money was directly credited to our account and we didn't know about it. So this 70 shillings is not reflected in our cash book. And so because this 70 shillings demonstrates that we have money in our bank that we had not recognized in the cash book in the bank column, so the adjustment we are going to do to this cash book is to recognize this money that we received since it is here and it is not yet here. So what that means is that remember when it comes to our cash book, um, increases in cash are debited. So it means that we are going to go ahead and debit this credit, the 70. So in other words, we are going to go ahead and put it on the left side, on the debit side of the cash book. So that is how we're going to do this in relation to this. So when you come to bank charges here, we have bank charges of 50 shillings. Now from here, according to our bank statement, of course, this 50 lies in this column of withdrawals. In other words, this 50 shillings was deducted from the amount of money we have in the bank. Of course, you all know that when the bank is going to charge its fees from our account, call them bank charges or call them ledger fees, it does not first notify the business that it's going to charge these fees. The bank simply goes ahead and just deducts the bank charges and the owners of the business or the owner of the account only gets to know of this when they receive the bank statement. So this indicates that the money in our bank was reduced by 50 shillings and these 50 shillings went to bank charges. So. It means that to our cash book as well, we are supposed to update our records also to indicate that some money was issued out. So we are going to put this 50 on the credit side of the cash book to show that actually, according to the bank statement, we missed that record in our cash book here, that that money was, we paid off that money for these bank charges. So in other words, for bank charges, we are going to go ahead and credit the account. So after doing that, uh, making sure 
that every record in the bank statement is being reflected in the cash book as well. After doing that, then we shall go ahead and balance our cash book. So when we go ahead and balance our cash book, then we shall see whether our cash book balance is the same as our bank statement balance. So let's go ahead and do just that. So looking at this, we shall go to begin with this bank credit, Paolo, 70 shillings. This 70 shillings, this is money we received on 30th that we didn't know about. We come to our cash book and update our records that, hey, we received some money on 30th. So I shall come here and say 30th. And I shall say that um, from Paolo, we received money from him, 70 shillings. So we received 70 shillings from Paolo. Then also bank charges right, on 31st. So I shall come here and say on 31st, we received some, we, 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 pay, we lost some money as bank charges. We paid off money, bank charges, 50. So we have, um, we have adjusted the cash book, in other words. We have adjusted the cash book. Now the records in our cash book are the same as the records in our bank statement. After adjusting our cash book, then we go ahead and balance off this account. So when we adjust this, when we add this up, our totals are here. This is 610. And this is 610. Our balance carried down is... 320 so you realize that after balancing off our cash book our balance carried down the cash book balance is 320 and if you look at this 320 you realize that the two balances are the same our records show that our cash the amount of money we have in the bank is 320 and when we come to our bank statement it is showing exactly that we have a balance of 320 now that these balances agree, now it means that this cash book balance, this one that we have attained, is what we are going to call the adjusted cash book balance. And so it is the adjusted cash book balance that we go ahead and use in our financial statements. Now, question. Is it always going to be the case that we are, we are going to go ahead and, balance and compare these records like this and end up having the same balance both in the cash book and in our bank statement is it always going to be the case of course sometimes it's not going to be the case this is what i mean there are instances where by yes you will have your cash book right here and then you'll go ahead and compare records in your bank statement and in your cash book to see what is missing you update your cash book you balance your cash book and you end up having a cash book balance that is still not coinciding with the bank statement balance it is possible so now when that happens that is when we go ahead and construct what we call a bank reconciliation statement in other words what i'm trying to say is that in case even after adjusting the cash book balance the balances are not the same it simply means that there are some items in the cash book that are not in the bank statement so if there are some items that are in the cash book and are not yet in the bank statement, we construct what we call a bank reconciliation statement. Let's do this practically. I am using another illustration here. What you're seeing before you is a cash book. However, this cash book has been adjusted. In other words, we have compared this cash book to the bank statement and we have come up with what we call an adjusted cash book balance. So this is the adjusted cash book balance. So when you see that you have the adjusted cash book balance, this is the bank statement that we are going to use for this illustration. From our adjusted, after adjusting our cash book balance, we are able to see that our balance here is 600 shillings and our balance here is 330. The balance on the bank statement is 330. So meaning even after adjusting our cash book, the balances are not the same. So if the balances are not the same, it simply means that there is information here that is not here. So let's look for it. 
let's begin um, ticking off one item at a time. Of course, the balance brought down here is 320. Even here, the balance 320. So we have that here and there. So here we have um, Henry 160. We have a deposit. This side of the cash book is the, the, the side where our cash, we, we deposited cash, where cash increases, cash inflows. So here yeah, we have 160 here, we have 160. We have privity here, 140, even here 140. This is a deposit, here yeah, a deposit. We have Socrates here, we received a check of 470. Socrates, do we have here? No, we do not. So let's put a star here. We do not have this record on the bank statement. And we are going to come back and talk about it later. So we come um, here to Kato, 90, even here we have 90. So this one is there, this one is there, the bank statement. So we come here to Chase, Chase 110. Now these ones on the credit side are withdrawers. The cash book 110, we come here 110, it's there. We have here Empire 90, here we have 90. We have 180 here. This is the National Water and Storage Corporation bill, 180. I think we are done here. If you look at our bank statement, both withdrawals and deposits have been exhausted. But if you come here in our cash book, you realize that uh, we have an entry here of 470 that is not reflected in the bank statement. We also have an entry here tagged Kisi that is not reflected in the bank statement. Now take note that when it comes to the cash book, these columns, this is the these are just by the these are bank columns. We've only extracted the bank column. So everything that you're seeing on this side of the debit the debit side of the cash book, these are checks that we have received. In other words, we received checks and then we went we got those checks, took them to the bank, and when we took them to the bank the bank was able to deposit those checks in our bank's account. That's why you see, for example, Henry gave us a check of 160. We come here and it was, we took the check to the bank and it was deposited. So what does that mean? It means that we took this check to the bank and the bank credited our bank account with that amount. Now, according to the bank, when you deposit money, this is referred to as a credit. When it is a withdrawal in the bank, it is a debit. Now you may realize that in the bank, it is the reverse. You see here in, in our cash book, when we receive cash, we debit. When we are taking cash out, we credit. But when you come to the bank statement, you realize that instead, when we are adding money to our bank account, the bank credits our account. Not like when in, in the cash book where we debit here, the bank does the reverse. In other words, when it, the bank when we put money on our bank account, we credit, the, the bank credits our account, and when we are withdrawing money, it debits. Why is that so? I'll be explaining more of that in our next session. Maybe just to give you a hint, according to the bank, it sees us or it sees its clients as a liability. When we take our money to the bank, the bank does not see this money as its money. It's not its money. It's a liability to the bank. When we take money to the bank, it's a liability to the bank because it's not the bank's money. It's our money, the clients. So that's why they go ahead and credit our accounts. They treat us, they, 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 all banks treat their clients as liabilities. So that is why when you put money on your bank, it will be credited. And when you remove money from the bank, it will be debited. I'll explain deeper about that in our upcoming session. So let's get back to this. So when this money on the debit side of the cash book is presented when we get a check, for example, when you got a check from Privity, a check of 140, we took it to the bank and the bank credited our account. So it means these are these things that are ticked. These are amounts that have been credited to our account. However, Socrates went ahead and gave us a check worth 470. 
when Socrates gives us that money, we recognize this money as received in our cash book. When we recognize this money as received in our cash book, we go ahead and take that check to our bank. However, at the time of getting the bank statement, the bank had not yet credited our account with this 470. So this means that this 470 shillings is what we call an uncredited check. So we identify that actually Socrates' check has not yet been credited to our account. So that is how, that is a terminology we use. We call it an uncredited check worth 470. So we shall note that, that we have an uncredited check of worth 470. So whereas we have identified that we recognize that we received this money, this money has no, actually not yet reached our bank. So the reverse is true when it comes to this side of the cash book. This represents the amount of checks we've issued. There are some people you may choose to pay using a check. So when you issue this check, for example, here we issued chess 110. When we issued Ampere, 90 shillings check. So when we issue these checks, these people that we've issued these checks, go ahead and present these checks to their banker. And then when they present these checks, money is actually deducted from our bank account to pay these people. So when you look at Ampere, for example, we issued her a check of 90. She went to the bank, presented that check. And when she presented that check, our account was debited. So what happened to this? It means this individual called Kisi, we issued a check to him. However, Kisi still has this check with him. Kisi has not yet presented this check to the bank so that our account, the amount of money on our account is removed. So because Kisi has not yet presented this check so that money is deducted from our bank, this kind of check is what we call an unpresented check. And this unpresented check is also being responsible for the discrepancy between the, the balances. So because of this, this uncredited check and this unpresented check, we prepare a statement we call the bank reconciliation statement. And this bank reconciliation statement is just a statement that seeks to explain the variance between these two figures. You realize that here, this is money that we have either issued or received. However, this money is in process. It is yet to come, but it has just, it's still in process. In other words, at the time we received the bank statement, these monies have not yet been reflected accordingly on our bank statement. So this is how we prepare the bank reconciliation statement to fix this. So we shall begin our reconciliation statement by this balance. This is the, the, the balance as this is, remember this is a cash book whose balance has been adjusted. We shall begin by saying adjusted cash book balance. Our adjusted cash book balance is 600 shillings. So we shall come here and say, this is 600 shillings. So if that is our adjusted cash book balance, so now we look at these checks. We have this one. This is called an uncredited check. In other words, the bank has not yet credited our account with this amount of money. We received this money from Socrates. We received a check. However, this money has not yet been reflected on our bank statement. Now, since this money has not yet reflected on our bank statement, much as we received the check, it technically means that we have not yet received the money. In the cash book, we have the, this balance here you're seeing, this 600, recognizes that we received this money. But in reality, much as we received this money by looking at the check, this check has not yet been deposited on our bank. So we have not yet received the money much as we received the check. So because we have not yet received the money, we are going to deduct it from our balance. 
we are going to first remove it. So from our adjusted cash book balance, we shall go ahead and remove this uncredited check. So we shall go ahead and say from our cash book balance, we shall say less. So less uncredited check and it is a check of 470. So I shall come here and say 470. When we remove this minus that, we end up with 130. So we remove this uncredited check. Then we have this check. This is an unpresented check. Like I have already explained, we presented this check to Kisi. We paid him. So we presented this check to him. And his responsibility was to go to the bank so that this amount of money is deducted from our bank statement. However, at the time of balancing the books, it so happens that this man, Kisi, has not yet presented the check for this money to be deducted from our bank statement. So what does that mean? It technically means that we still have this money in our bank. Remember here, according to our cash book records, we recognized that we have given away this money. But it so happens that much as we issued the check and gave out this money, this individual, Kisi, has not yet received the money. He has not yet collected the money from the bank. So it means we still technically have the money in our bank. So because we still have this money in our bank, we are going to go ahead and add it back. Remember this cash book balance, it's, it, it's indicating that this, it, it's less this money. It's recognizing that we've lost this money. But since this guy has not yet gotten it from the bank, then it means we still have this 200. So it means we're supposed to add it back to this balance. So we shall go, much as we said, less than created check. So we shall go ahead and say, add back that money. So we shall add unpresented checks. And the unpresented check here is worth 200. So when we add that, we end up with, 330 and from here from 330 you're able to realize that this 330 so happens to be the same balance we're having here which is the balance which is the balance as per our bank statement so you find that our bank statement balance is 300 and we have been able to arrive at 300 as our bank statement balance so from here you can see that we started with the adjusted cash book balance and now this narration from here to here is simply trying to explain the variance between this to that. In other words, we started this from 600, the adjusted cash book balance, and we were able to explain how we can connect the adjusted cash book balance to the bank statement balance. In other words, this is the process of reconciling the cash book balance to the bank statement balance. And this is your bank reconciliation statement. Now, this is not the only way bank reconciliation statements are recorded. This is only an introductory video. And in this video, I have just been able to show you one method. And that is we can start from the adjusted cash book balance and reconcile our bank to the bank statement. We can as well flip it do it the other way around. We can begin with the bank statement balance and we reconcile up to the adjusted cash book balance. We are going to do some of these things in our upcoming sessions. So in our next session, I'll be explaining more about why we debit and why we credit the bank statement differently. And also in our upcoming sessions, we shall be doing some worked examples on the bank reconciliation statements. And in these worked examples, I'll be able to explain more deeply about the reasons that cause variances in the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. of double entry accounting, we know that when assets increase, we debit the asset account, and when they decrease, we credit. Cash is an asset. Increases in assets are debited, whereas decreases in assets are credited. But why is it that the bank does the reverse? When I deposit money in my bank account, they instead credit my account, and when I'm withdrawing, they debit.
Well, in this session, I get to explain why. Classification of items for accounting depends on the kind of business you're running. If you are the businessman running a merchandise shop, cash is an asset. So when you get this cash from sales, you'll debit the cash account and credit the cash account when you're paying out cash. However, if you look at it from the perspective of the bank, when the bank receives money from depositors, the money the bank is receiving is actually not its money. The money belongs to the clients of the bank. The bank is only acting as a custodian of this money or as a safe place to keep the money on behalf of the clients. This means that at any time, upon request of the client, the bank is obligated to pay back this money. This makes the clients to the bank a sort of liability to the bank. Since the bank is liable to pay the clients whenever the client wants to withdraw the money, so in the books of the bank, the client of the bank is treated as a liability. And so whenever a client makes a cash deposit, the client's account is credited since increases in liability are credited. And whenever money is being deducted from the client's account, it would mean a liability is reducing, therefore leading to debiting of the client's account. This background knowledge is important to take note of as you do the bank reconciliation statement. When a bank customer debits the cash book, the bank will credit its bank account. And when the client credits his cash book in the bank, this will be represented as a debit entry. We shall be able to see this further in the upcoming worked examples in the session coming up in this series. Like this video if you like it. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you've not yet subscribed. Check out other accounting lectures on the channel. My name is Arnold Dwanga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care. <music>
we adjust the cash book balance by subtracting the amount of the standing order from it. A standing order lies in the category of items that are debited in the bank statement but do not appear on the credit side of the cash book. In other words, money was removed from the bank but was not removed in the cash book. Because this money was removed in the bank statement, we go ahead and remove it too from the cash book balance. Direct debits. Imagine you have to keep paying electricity bills every month, but instead of you initi initiating the payments, you decide to instruct your utility company to go ahead and always deduct money from your bank account every month whenever the bill is due. When the utility company goes ahead and obtains the money direct from your bank, this is what we consider as a direct debit. Direct debits are payments that have to be made such as electricity and water bills and they are paid in such a way that you don't ask the bank to pay the bills as it is the case with a standing order. But rather, you give permission to the creditor, in this case to your utility company, you give them permission to obtain the money directly from your bank account. This is useful if the amounts to be collected vary from time to time and since the amounts are determined by the creditor. Take note that with a standing order, if the amount to be paid out is to be changed, the client has to first communicate to the bank. With direct debits, it is the creditor who informs the bank of any changes in the amounts collectible. So how do direct debits cause a discrepancy between the cash book balance and the bank balance? Well, during normal business operations, when direct debits happen, the business only gets to know about the direct debit when they receive the bank statement, since a direct debit is something that happens in the bank without the business knowing. Since some money has been deducted from the business bank account in the name of direct debit, it means the cash book balance is overstated by the amount of that direct debit. To make the bank balance to reconcile with the cash book balance, we deduct the direct debit amount from the cash book balance. As you can see, direct debits also lie in the category of items that are debited in the bank statement but do not appear on the credit side of the cash book. This is the same as saying money was deducted in the bank statement but it wasn't deducted in the cash book. That's why we go ahead and deduct that money from the cash book balance so that the two balances are able to agree. Direct credits. Sometimes a business may have debtors who instead of paying cash at the business premises decide to deposit the cash direct to the business's bank account. When this happens, the bank will go ahead and credit the bank account of the business. This is what we call a direct credit. However, the business itself will not know about this until it receives the bank statement. The bank statement will show that the business received money that has not yet been recognized in the cash book as received. This means the bank account balance will be higher than the cash book balance by the amount of the direct credit. To reconcile this, we go ahead and add the amount of the direct credit to the cash book balance. From what you can see, this lies in the category of items that were credited in the bank statement but do not appear on the debit side of the cash book. In other words, this is money recognized as received in the bank statement but is not yet recognized as received in the cash book. So that is why we add it to the cash book balance. Bank charges. Bank charges are simply fees charged by banks for services rendered. They include checkbook charges, ledger maintenance fees, among other fees. When bank charges are deducted from the bank account balance, the business will not know about this until they receive a bank statement. So when the business receives the bank statement, it will show a balance that is less than the cash book balance since these bank charges 
will have not yet been deducted in the cash book balance. To fix this, we go ahead and reduce the cash book balance by the amount of the bank charges. This lies in the category of items that were debited in the bank statement but are not credited in the cash book, or in other words, money was recognized as deducted in the bank statement but was not recognized as deducted in the cash book. So we go ahead and deduct it from the cash book balance as well. Dishonored checks. During the course of business, a check can be issued or received. When you receive a check, it means you've been paid. And when you issue a check, it means you're paying someone. But issuing and receiving a check is only the first phase. In order to actually realize the money written on the check, the check needs to be presented to the bank. When you issue a check, you'll indicate in your books that you've given out money. Therefore, you'll credit the cash book. However, if the check is dishonored, it simply means that whereas in the cash book you've recognized that you've given out money, the bank has not deducted the money. In other words, money has been deducted in the cash book, but it has not been deducted in the bank statement. This would mean that the cash balance in the cash book is less than the bank statement balance by the amount on the dishonored check. To fix this, we go ahead and add back the amount of the dishonored check to the cash book balance. This lies in the category of items that appear on the credit side of the cash book but do not appear on the debit side of the bank statement. This is specific to checks issued. What about checks received? When you receive a check, you will indicate in your books that you have received money. Therefore, you will debit the cash book. However, if the check you received is dishonored, it simply means that whereas in the cash book you recognize that you received money, the bank has not recognized this receipt of money and so the bank has not credited your account with the money on the check. In other words, Money has been added to the cash book balance, but a corresponding addition of that money on the bank statement balance has not been made. This would mean that the cash book balance is more than the bank statement balance by the amount of the dishonored check. To fix this, we go ahead and deduct the money on the dishonored check from the cash book balance. Now, this lies in the category of items that appear on the debit side of the cash book but do not appear on the credit side of the bank statement. And this is specific to checks received. But why may a check be dishonored? A check may be dishonored due to one of the following reasons. Maybe there is insufficient funds on the drawer's account. Maybe there are differing signatures on the check. Uh, maybe the errors on the check, for example... It, Amount in words is not similar to the amount written in figures. The other reason could be maybe the check that has been issued or received is stale. You know, checks presented to the bank six months from the date it was prepared that they become stale checks and they are dishonored as a result. Then you may find uh, maybe a check has, has been is a post dated check, meaning it's not applying to the date when it has been presented. So uh, then we also may have issues like the drawer may write a check and then maybe, um, maybe stop the bank from cashing the check. So these are just some of the reasons that may cause a check to be dishonored. Well, let's continue with um, the factors that cause the discrepancies between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. There is... What we call errors, we can have errors either in the cash book or in the bank statement. Now, an error is a misstatement or an unintentional mistake made in the books of accounts. Errors made either in the bank statement or cash book can lead to differences in the cash book balance and bank statement balance. Errors can be due to things like complete omission of an entry, they can be caused by recording an amount wrongly or recording a transaction on the wrong side of the account or wrong totals or among other causes. Now, when an error has been identified, 
we need to examine the effect of that error on the stated cash book or bank statement balance. Now, firstly, let's look at errors made in the cash book. If the error is such that it increases the cash book balance, we need to subtract that error from the cash book balance. Any error that increases the cash book balance makes the cash book balance to be overstated by that error. That is why we subtract it from the cash book balance. The same reasoning applies when the error reduces the cash book balance. If the error reduces the cash book balance, we go ahead and add it back to the cash book balance. An error that decreases the cash book balance makes the cash book balance to be understated by that error. That is why we add it back to the cash book balance. From the beginning of this session till now, the factors that have been discussed are the ones you deal with when adjusting the cash book. Now, some other items to, be, to consider may be things like interest income. That is another item that may appear on the credit side of the bank statement but not on the debit side of the cash book. Well, after all this is done, we can now go ahead and compute the adjusted cash book balance. It is the adjusted cash book balance that is eventually posted to the balance sheet. Take note of that. Take note that the cash book balance at the top is before adjustments are made. It is after the adjustments are made that we get a new cash book balance which we eventually post to the balance sheet. Now it's time to deal with the other part of the bank reconciliation statement. In this second part, we start with the adjusted cash book balance. However, at this point, if the adjusted cash book balance is still different from the bank statement balance, then we seek to reconcile the two balances. This takes us to more factors leading to discrepancies between the bank statement balance and the cash book balance. Unpresented checks. When you're running a business, sometimes you may choose to pay someone, say your supplier, by issuing them a check. Issuing them a check means that they can go to your bank, present the check, and then they'll get paid. But sometimes you can issue a check and the person you issued it to has not yet presented the check at the time you obtained the bank statement. If the person has not yet presented the check, it technically means that you still have the money with you since the money has not yet been collected. When the check was issued, you went ahead and credited the cash book to recognize that you've given out money. But since the money you recognized as having given away has not yet been deducted from your bank account because the check has not yet been presented, this would mean that you still possess the money. And so the thing to do is to add that money back to the adjusted cash book balance. Uncredited checks. Just like the way you may pay some of your suppliers by issuing them a check, the same is true for some of your debtors. The debtors or other people may choose to pay you by giving you a check. When you receive the check, your role is to go present the check to the bank so that they credit the check to your account. However, if at the time you received the bank statement, the bank hadn't yet credited your account with the checks you had presented to them, then we consider these as uncredited checks. In other words, these uncredited checks represent money you have recognized as received in your cash book, but not yet recognized as received in the bank statement. Since the bank has not yet credited these checks, it only means that technically this money has not yet actually been transferred to your bank account. So what we do here is that we remove this money from the cash book, adjusted cash book balance. That is why we go ahead and subtract the uncredited checks from the adjusted cash book balance when constructing the bank reconciliation statement. And finally, we have the errors made in the bank statement. We firstly have to examine the effect of these errors in the bank statement. If the error in the bank statement is such that it increases the bank statement balance, then we shall add that error to the adjusted cash book balance. And if the error reduces the bank statement balance, we shall go ahead 
and reduce that error from the bank statement balance. In so doing, we are able to finally arrive at the bank statement balance and that is it regarding the bank reconciliation statement. So this explains the alternative format of preparing a bank reconciliation statement. In a nutshell, a bank reconciliation statement can be prepared by one of the following formats. The first format could be first adjusting the cash book, then thereafter you begin with the adjusted cash book balance till you arrive at the bank statement balance. Or you can begin with the cash book balance before comparing it with the bank statement, then flow to the bank statement balance. Or you can do the reverse of this very method by beginning with the bank statement balance and arrive at the balance as per cash book before comparison with the bank statement. In our upcoming sessions, I'll be doing worked examples on the bank reconciliation statement. If there are any questions that you need to ask, please let me know in the comment section below. Like this video if you like it. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you've not yet subscribed. Check out other awesome accounting lectures on the channel. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care. Causes of differences between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. Now, there are quite a number of reasons why a bank statement balance may differ from a cash book balance. In today's session, we get to discuss the reasons why. It is important that one understands these reasons as these go a long way in helping with preparation of the bank reconciliation statement. And we'll get started right now. Now, here are the reasons that we are going to discuss. We are going to discuss what we mean by standing order, direct debits, direct credits, bank charges, unpresented checks, uncredited checks, errors, and dishonored checks. On your screen is an alternative format for preparing a bank reconciliation statement. So as I explained the factors that cause differences between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance, I will be indirectly explaining this alternative approach to preparing the bank reconciliation statement. So let's get started. We'll get started with what we mean by the standing order. Let's say you have a debt to pay and you agreed with the lender that you will be paying him a monthly installment until the debt is cleared. So rather than you paying cash to the money lender, you decide to instruct your bank to deposit money on the money lender's bank account every month. What you've just told the bank to do is what we call a standing order. Now, this is not limited to just paying off your debts. It could extend to rent payments and other monthly payment obligations. A standing order is, therefore, an instruction given by a customer to the bank to pay a fixed amount of money to a specific person on a specific date. Take note that it is the customer of a bank that issues a standing order. So how does this make the discrepancy in the cash and bank balance to come about? Remember, in your day-to-day -day operations, you'll keep posting to the cash book. When the bank goes ahead and implements the standing order, it will not notify the business owner about it. The business owner will only find out when they receive the bank statement, showing that some money has been deducted from the bank account to implement a standing order. This would mean that the cash book balance would be more than the bank balance by the amount of that standing order. In order to make the two balance, we adjust the cash book balance by subtracting the amount of the standing order from it. A standing order lies in the category of items that are debited in the bank statement but do not appear on the credit side of the cash book. In other words, money was removed from the bank but was not removed in the cash book. Because this money was removed in the bank statement, we go ahead and remove it too from the cash book balance. Direct debits. Imagine you have to keep paying electricity bills every month, but instead of you initi initiating the payments, you decide to instruct your utility company to go ahead and always deduct money from your bank account every month whenever the bill is due. 
When the utility company goes ahead and obtains the money direct from your bank, this is what we consider as a direct debit. Direct debits are payments that have to be made, such as electricity and water bills, and they are paid in such a way that you don't ask the bank to pay the bills as it is the case with a standing order. But rather, you give permission to the creditor, in this case to your utility company, you give them permission to obtain the money directly from your bank account. This is useful if the amounts to be collected vary from time to time and since the amounts are determined by the creditor. Take note that with a standing order, if the amount to be paid out is to be changed, the client has to first communicate to the bank. With direct debits, it is the creditor who informs the bank of any changes in the amounts collectible. So how do direct debits cause a discrepancy between the cash book balance and the bank balance? Well, during normal business operations, when direct debits happen, the business only gets to know about the direct debit when they receive the bank statement, since a direct debit is something that happens in the bank without the business knowing. Since some money has been deducted from the business bank account in the name of direct debit, it means the cash book balance is overstated by the amount of that direct debit. To make the bank balance to reconcile with the cash book balance, we deduct the direct debit amount from the cash book balance. As you can see, direct debits also lie in the category of items that are debited in the bank statement but do not appear on the credit side of the cash book. This is the same as saying money was deducted in the bank statement but it wasn't deducted in the cash book. That's why we go ahead and deduct that money from the cash book balance so that the two balances are able to agree. Direct Credits Sometimes, a business may have debtors who, instead of paying cash at the business premises, decide to deposit the cash direct to the business's bank account. When this happens, the bank will go ahead and credit the bank account of the business. This is what we call a direct credit. However, the business itself will not know about this until it receives the bank statement. The bank statement will show that the business received money that has not yet been recognized in the cash book as received. This means the bank account balance will be higher than the cash book balance by the amount of the direct credit. To reconcile this, we go ahead and add the amount of the direct credit to the cash book balance. From what you can see, this lies in the category of items that were credited in the bank statement but do not appear on the debit side of the cash book. In other words, this is money recognized as received in the bank statement but is not yet recognized as received in the cash book. So that is why we add it to the cash book balance. Bank charges. Bank charges are simply fees charged by banks for services rendered. They include checkbook charges, ledger maintenance fees, among other fees. When bank charges are deducted from the bank account balance, the business will not know about this until they receive a bank statement. So when the business receives the bank statement, it will show a balance that is less than the cash book balance since these bank charges will have not yet been deducted in the cash book balance. To fix this, we go ahead and reduce the cash book balance by the amount of the bank charges. This lies in the category of items that were debited in the bank statement but are not credited in the cash book. Or in other words, money was recognized as deducted in the bank statement but was not recognized as deducted in the cash book. So we go ahead and deduct it from the cash book balance as well. Dishonored checks. During the course of business, a check can be issued or received. When you receive a check, it means you've been paid. And when you issue a check, it means you're paying someone. 
But issuing and receiving a check is only the first phase. In order to actually realize the money written on the check, the check needs to be presented to the bank. When you issue a check, you'll indicate in your books that you've given out money. Therefore, you'll credit the cash book. However, if the check is dishonored, it simply means that whereas in the cash book you've recognized that you've given out money, the bank has not deducted the money. In other words, money has been deducted in the cash book, but it has not been deducted in the bank statement. This would mean that the cash balance in the cash book is less than the bank statement balance by the amount on the dishonored check. To fix this, we go ahead and add back the amount of the dishonored check to the cash book balance. This lies in the category of items that appear on the credit side of the cash book but do not appear on the debit side of the bank statement. This is specific to checks issued. What about checks received? When you receive a check, you will indicate in your books that you have received money. Therefore, you'll debit the cash book. However, if the check you received is dishonored, it simply means that whereas in the cash book you've recognized that you've received money, the bank has not recognized this receipt of money and so the bank has not credited your account with the money on the check. In other words, money has been added to the cash book balance, but a corresponding addition of that money on the bank statement balance has not been made. This would mean that the cash book balance is more than the bank statement balance by the amount of the dishonored check. To fix this, we go ahead and deduct the money on the dishonored check from the cash book balance. Now this lies in the category of items that appear on the debit side of the cash book but do not appear on the credit side of the bank statement. And this is specific to checks received. But why may a check be dishonored? A check may be dishonored due to one of the following reasons. Maybe there is insufficient funds on the drawer's account. Maybe there are differing signatures on the check. Uh, maybe the errors on the check, for example, amount in words is not similar to the amount written in figures. The other reason could be maybe the check that has been issued or received is stale. You know, checks presented to the bank six months from the date it was prepared that they become stale checks and they are dishonored as a result then you may find uh, maybe a check has, has been is a post dated check meaning it's not applying to the date when it has been presented so uh, then we also may have issues like the drawer may write a check and then maybe um, maybe stop the bank from cashing the check so these are just some of the reasons that may cause a check to be dishonored well, let's continue with um, the factors that cause the discrepancies between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. There is what we call errors. We can have errors either in the cash book or in the bank statement. Now, an error is a misstatement or an unintentional mistake made in the books of accounts. Errors made either in the bank statement or cash book can lead to differences in the cash book balance and bank statement balance. Errors can be due to things like complete omission of an entry. They can be caused by recording an amount wrongly or recording a transaction on the wrong side of the account or wrong totals or among other causes. Now, when an error has been identified, we need to examine the effect of that error on the stated cash book or bank statement balance. Now, firstly, let's look at errors made in the cash book. If the error is such that it increases the cash book balance, we need to subtract that error from the cash book balance. Any error that increases the cash book balance makes the cash book balance to be overstated by that error. That is why we subtract it from the cash book balance. The same reasoning applies when the error reduces the cash book balance. If the error reduces the cash book balance, we go ahead and add it back to the cash book balance. An error that decreases the cash book balance makes the cash book balance to be understated by that error. That is why we add it back to the cash book balance. 
From the beginning of this session till now, the factors that have been discussed are the ones you deal with when adjusting the cash book. Now, some other items to, be, to consider may be things like interest income. That is another item that may appear on the credit side of the bank statement but not on the debit side of the cash book. Well, after all this is done, we can now go ahead and compute the adjusted cash book balance. It is the adjusted cash book balance that is eventually posted to the balance sheet. Take note of that. Take note that the cash book balance at the top is before adjustments are made. It is after the adjustments are made that we get a new cash book balance which we eventually post to the balance sheet. Now it's time to deal with the other part of the bank reconciliation statement. In this second part, we start with the adjusted cash book balance. However, at this point, if the adjusted cash book balance is still different from the bank statement balance, then we seek to reconcile the two balances. This takes us to more factors leading to discrepancies between the bank statement balance and the cash book balance. Unpresented checks. When you're running a business, sometimes you may choose to pay someone, say your supplier, by issuing them a check. Issuing them a check means that they can go to your bank, present the check, and then they'll get paid. But sometimes you can issue a check and the person you issued it to has not yet presented the check at the time you obtained the bank statement. If the person has not yet presented the check, it technically means that you still have the money with you since the money has not yet been collected. When the check was issued, you went ahead and credited the cash book to recognize that you've given out money. But since the money you recognized as having given away has not yet been deducted from your bank account because the check has not yet been presented, this would mean that you still possess the money and so the thing to do is to add that money back to the adjusted cash book balance. Uncredited checks. Just like the way you may pay some of your suppliers by issuing them a check, the same is true for some of your debtors. The debtors or other people may choose to pay you by giving you a check. When you receive the check, your role is to go present the check to the bank so that they credit the check to your account. However, if at the time you received the bank statement, the bank hadn't yet credited your account with the checks you had presented to them, then we consider these as uncredited checks. In other words, these uncredited checks represent money you have recognized as received in your cash book, but not yet recognized as received in the bank statement. Since the bank has not yet credited these checks, it only means that technically this money has not yet actually been transferred to your bank account. So what we do here is that we remove this money from the cash book, adjusted cash book balance. That is why we go ahead and subtract the uncredited checks from the adjusted cash book balance when constructing the bank reconciliation statement. And finally, we have the errors made in the bank statement. We firstly have to examine the effect of these errors in the bank statement. If the error in the bank statement is such that it increases the bank statement balance, then we shall add that error to the adjusted cash book balance. And if the error reduces the bank statement balance, we shall go ahead and reduce that error from the bank statement balance. In so doing, we are able to finally arrive at the bank statement balance. And that is it regarding the bank reconciliation statement. So this explains the alternative format of preparing a bank reconciliation statement. In a nutshell, a bank reconciliation statement can be prepared by one of the following formats. The first format could be first adjusting the cash book, then thereafter you begin with the adjusted cash book balance till you arrive at the bank statement balance. Or you can begin with the cash book balance before comparing it with the bank statement, then flow to the bank statement balance. Or you can do the reverse of this very method by beginning with the bank statement balance and arrive at the balance as per cash book 
before comparison with a bank statement. In our upcoming sessions, I'll be doing worked examples on the bank reconciliation statement. If there are any questions that you need to ask, please let me know in the comment section below. Like this video if you like it. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you've not yet subscribed. Check out other awesome accounting lectures on the channel. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care. Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. Right before you is a bank statement and a cash book. If you look at this bank's uh, this cash book right here, you're able to see that it's having a credit balance. Now we all know that cash books normally have debit balances. Or in other words, the cash account normally has a debit balance. Cash being an asset, the normal balance for assets is normally debit. But in this case, when you look at this cash book now, when you look at this cash book, we've only extracted the bank column. So the bank column according to this it's showing a credit balance of 308 shillings now that credit balance of 308 this is what we call an overdraft now an overdraft simply means that an entity withdrew more money than it had in the bank and because it withdrew more money than it had in the bank you end up having a negative balance on the cash book in this case we are having a cash overdraft of 308 shillings so now we have been doing bank reconciliation statements with RIF when we were only having a debit balance. Now, what if we are having a credit balance or what if we are having a bank overdraft? How do we manufacture the bank reconciliation statement in this kind of scenarios? So this is a practical illustration that I'm going to show you on how to go about this. And at the end of this video, you'll be able to realize that the way we handle the adjusting entries when we are dealing with a cash book that has a debit balance is not any different from the way we do it when we are having a cash book with a bank overdraft. So let's get started. Here we have this cash book. Um, this is the bank overdraft. Then we are having a bank statement as well. It is reflecting bank overdraft or what you're seeing here as O slash D O D O D simply means overdraft 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 so meaning that uh, for this particular entity the bank uh, is having an overdraft of um, 423 this is the overdraft as at the bank statement and of course you can see that the overdraft as at the bank statement is not um, it is not the same as the overdraft as at the cash book so we need to reconcile these two now for purposes of this illustration this cash book is already adjusted. That's why we've written it as adjusted cash book. So, uh, like I had earlier pointed out in our earlier sessions, the process of bank reconciliation begins with us comparing what is here that is not here. So, in other words, we get to our bank statement and we compare the records in the bank statement and we try to see which of these records that are here that are not fed in here. So we go ahead and find the records that are not here and try and adjust our cash book. So after feeding in everything that is here to make sure that it is in our accounting records at our business, that is when we come up with the adjusted cash book. So this is an adjusted cash book. That first phase was done. So this adjusted cash book gave us an overdraft. So this overdraft is as per this adjusted cash book. And we said that... If our adjusted cash book balance is still not the same as our bank statement balance, then it simply means that there are things here that are not here. So the things that are here that are not here are what we handle in the bank reconciliation statements. These are checks that we received and these are checks that we issued. So it is one of these sides, it's one of these checks. Either it is a check that we received or a check that we issued that has not yet been reflected in this bank statement. And it is either an unpresented check or an uncredited check. An unpresented check is a check that we have issued to one of our clients and 
they have just simply not yet presented it to our bank so that our bank deducts the money and pays them. So we are going to find out which one of these checks that was not presented. And of course, these figures here on the debit side of the cash book represent the checks that we have received. When we receive a check, we will go ahead and take that check to the bank. Now, if one of these checks is not yet being reflected in our bank statement, it simply means that whereas we have recognized that we have received this money from one of maybe our customers, this check has simply not yet been credited to our account. And so those are what we call uncredited checks. So let's first identify which ones are missing here. This is the debit side of the cash book. This is the credit side. I already explained in our previous session that when we receive cash in the cash book, we debit. When we are giving out cash, we credit. But however, when it comes to the bank, it is different. I explained why in our previous session. In, in, in our bank statement, it is the reverse. When we put money in the bank account, it, the bank credits our account. And when we are removing money, it debits the account. I explained why it is so in our previous session. So let's get to it. Let's look at the checks that we received. We have, first of all, we have a balance. The opening balance for this cash book was a credit balance of 709 which is a bank overdraft, so that one is already there and there. Then we let it start with here, the checks that we, the things that are on the debit side of the cash book should correspond to the things that are on the credit side of the bank statement. So Chagulani here, we have uh, a check that we received here from Chagulani 308308. 308. We have a check received from Museveni 120, 120. Then we have a check we received from Mwebaze 124, 124. Then we have a check we received from Kabuleta 106. This one is not reflected on the credit side. So we put a star there. So if this is a check, we received this check from Kabuleta and we recognized that we received this money in our cash book. However, we went and took this check to the bank. However, the bank, at the time of receiving this bank statement, the bank has not yet credited our bank statement. So it means the calculator check is what we call an uncredited check. Let me write it like that. That's an uncredited check. So we point it out like that. Then we come back this way. We have Mutebo here. These are now checks we issued. We issued a check to Mutebo, 140, and when we issued it, he presented it and it, our bank was debited. We issued a check to Katumba. Oh yeah, Katumba, 63 and 63 shillings. And well, Katumba is still seated on the check. Katumba has not yet presented the check to the bank so that his money is deducted from our bank statement or from our bank account. So because Katumba's money is not reflected here, it means Katumba has not yet presented the check so because Katumba has not yet presented the check to our bank so that our bank account is debited, we call this an unpresented check. It's not yet been presented. Then we come here, United Trust, 77. This one, we issued her a check and yeah, 77, actually it was a standing order. Yep. And then we have bank charges of 49 here. Of course, these ones were already adjustments that were made in the cash book here. The United Trust and Bank Charges, these were adjustments that were made in the cash book. Now, as far as the bank reconciliation is concerned, we only already, we have this uncredited check of 106 and this unpresented check of 63. So now that we have identified the items that we are going to handle in our bank reconciliation statement, now we can go ahead and prepare our bank reconciliation statement. Just one thing to point out here, that when we are dealing with, after adjusting our cash book, the bank reconciliation statement is, the part where we deal with the bank reconciliation statement, handles unpresented checks, uncredited checks, and errors. 
that have been made in the bank statement. Those three items are the ones that are handled in the bank reconciliation statement. All the other items are handled in the adjusted cash book. And those other items we discussed earlier, things like uh, bank charges, direct debits, direct credits, errors in the cash book, and so forth. So let's go on and start constructing our bank reconciliation statement. So what we're having here is our bank reconciliation statement. So we shall begin overdraft as per ad adjusted cash book. Our overdraft as per our adjusted cash book is 308. So I'll come here and say this is 308. Then we're supposed to add unpresented checks. I think I have been explaining why we add unpresented checks. Remember, an unpresented check is a check that, for example, this one is an unpresented check. We gave Katumba money. We recognized here in our cash book that money has left our, our bank. However, Katumba has not yet presented this money to the bank so that money in our bank is actually deducted to pay him. So because that has not yet happened, it technically means that that money still exists on our bank account. So because our money still exists, the 63, so we shall add it back. Because here, by crediting here, we had subtracted it. Now we need to add it back. So that's why we add and present a check. So we shall add an unpresented check there of 63. So when we add this... Now this is like 308, 308 is a negative number because it's overdraft, it's a negative number. <sighs> okay, I think I just realized an error here. Um, this is supposed to be 308, not 308. The balance here is 380. I apologize for that error. This is supposed to be 380. 380, that's the balance, not 308. That was an error. So it means that overdraft as per our adjusted cash book here is 380 right there. So 380 is a negative number here. So it is 380, as in negative 380, add unpresented checks. Our unpresented checks are 63. So when we add those two, we end up with 317. So after adding our 300 and getting 317, then we're supposed to subtract uncredited checks. In this case, our uncredited check is a check that we received from Kabuleta. We received this check, we took it to the bank, and the bank has not yet credited it to our account. In other words, we have recognized this as money that we have received, but it has not yet reflected in the bank statement. This technically means that we have not actually yet, we haven't received this money. It is still a transaction that is in process. It's still, it has not yet matured. So we'll remove this from... We subtract it from our adjusted cash book balance since the money has not yet reached our bank. So our uncredited check here, we shall go ahead and uh, remove this 300 and, uh, this 106. So when we subtract, of course, this, this is an, a negative also as well. Negative 380 plus 63 gives us negative 317. So negative 317 plus negative 106, we shall end up with um, negative 423. Now this 423 that we have ended up with so happens to be the overdraft that is at our bank statement. In other words, our bank reconciliation statement has explained the variance between the adjusted cash book balance and the cash book balance. So this is the balance as per bank statement, which so happens to be an overdraft. So from this simple illustration, you're able to realize that the adjustments needed to, to reconcile a bank overdraft 
according to an entries cash book with the bank statement balance, are the same as those needed when the account is not overdrawn. In our upcoming sessions, we will be doing more worked examples on the bank reconciliation statement. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia, and thanks for tuning in. Like this video if you like it. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you've not yet subscribed. Check out other accounting lectures on the channel. On your screen, the question says that the following data is extracted from the records of Juma, a trader in Busia. And that what you're seeing on your screen is the data that has been extracted from the records of Juma, who is who so also happens to be a trader. Now we are going to use that data that has been given to us to construct a bank reconciliation statement. Right before you is a template of the bank reconciliation statement, and we are going to fill it in together, analyzing transaction by transaction. So let's get to it. <music> is extracted from the records of Juma, a trader in Busia. Number one, they're telling us that balance as per cash book on 30th November 2016 was 20,783,520. So that is um, the balance as per cash book. So that's what we're going to put here. Balance as per cash book is 20 million. So we shall go ahead and put it right there. So that's how it is, 20,783,520. So Roman 2, they're telling us that balance as per bank statement on 30th November 2016 was 25,533,960. Now that is the balance as per the bank statement. So balance as per the bank statement. This is the balance we're supposed to arrive at. So we're going to see whether... We are going to arrive at it. I'll write it on a side note. In other words, we are going to begin from balance as per cash book. We are going to fill in this template and we are supposed to arrive at balance as per bank statement. The figure we are going to arrive at here is what we've been given as balance as per bank statement as at that date of 30th November 2016. So I'll write it on a side note just... So we'll keep this somewhere. We'll refer to it at the end. So move on, Roman 3. We have a bounced check of 223,200 from Mugulusi and it was returned. So we have a bounced check. So now we are beginning with our balance as per cash book. So uh, according to our cash book, uh, Mugulusi gave us a check. When he gave us a check, we went and presented that check to the bank. However, that check bounced. So because that check bounced, it means we are supposed to subtract that amount of money of the, of the bounced check from our cash book. We need, we need to remove it. So it means as we are adjusting our cash book, this is what we are going to do here. We are going to write it in this section, bounced check. Now, let's... Uh, I would like to emphasize this as well. There is this section where we are going to adjust the cash book. When we adjust the cash book, we are going to up, uh, arrive at what we call the adjusted cash book balance here. This adjusted cash book balance that we are going to arrive at here is the balance that is carried to the financial statements. It's the balance that we take to the balance sheet. Then down here, we have the bank, the second section of the bank reconciliation statement where we are going to look at the checks, uh, the uncredited checks and unpresented checks, and then also the errors in the bank statement. In other words, what I want you to, to, to put in your head is that as we are going through these data points that we are extracted from Juma Traders books, what goes in the second part of the bank reconciliation statement are three things the uncredited checks the unpresented checks and then if there are any errors in the bank statement those ones we deal with them in the second part of the bank reconciliation statement so all the other issues of the bank reconciliation statement that are not uncredited checks 
not unpresented checks and there are not errors in the bank statement those ones we are going to handle them from here we are either going to add them or subtract them from this cash book balance and uh, we discussed some of these issues in our previous sessions things like direct debits direct credits things like errors in the cash book standing orders bank charges we handle these things up here so let's get back to mugulusi mugulusi gave us a check when he gave us a check in our cash book we included that money then the check bounces if it bounces it means we didn't get the money so we're supposed to subtract that money from this balance so from our uh, 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 from the balance cash book we need to subtract that bounced check so we shall write that issue down here so bounced check of 223000 so we shall go here and say less mugulusi so mugulusi we have a bounced check of 223 so we move on to our next data point received a debit memo of 53760 in respect of an error in a standing order payment so there was an error in a standing order payment. In other words, there was a standing order. We've all we've discussed what a standing order is in our previous session. So the bank went ahead and made a standing order and paid some money to someone. However, there was an error in that standing order. And when that error was made, a debit entry was made in our on our bank account. And that debit entry the bank sent us a debit memo now the debit memo is simply a document that shows that a debit entry or it's notifying to us that a debit entry has been made on our bank account now if a debit entry uh, if if there was a standing order then a debit entry was made it a debit entry simply means that money was actually deducted from our account now back in our cash book balance we didn't know about that money had that had been deducted from our account but now the bank has told us that it debited there was a debit entry in other words money was deducted from our bank account now if the money was deducted from our bank account then we are going to go ahead and deduct it as well from this figure because that was not accounted for yeah if I may repeat the what the narration says, it says we received a debit memo of 53,760 in respect of an error in a standing order. So there was an error in a standing order and the a debit entry was made in our bank account, meaning money was deducted. So if money was deducted from our bank account, we shall deduct it as well from this cash book balance. So again, we shall write it down here and say debit memo. So debit memo standing order was 53 so that is the debit memo so moving on to the next mugoma a data paid directly to the bank the equivalent of three million five hundred and fifty five thousand six hundred and bank charges of seventy thousand eight hundred were deducted from this transaction now uh, those are two in one let's deal with one thing at a time let's look at mugoma he's a debtor he paid directly to the bank. Of course, when a debtor goes and pays directly to the bank, you never get to know that that payment was made until you receive the bank statement. So it means when we were writing in our cash book, we never recognized that money since this data of ours went directly to the bank. But now that we have gotten the bank statement, and now we have been able to realize that actually one of our debtors went and paid directly to the bank, we are supposed to recognize that money in our cash book as well. So it means in our cash book balance, we are supposed to add that money as well. This is what we call a direct credit. In other words, our data went, paid money to the bank, and our bank was credited with the amount. So Mugoma paid us 3555600 we add that money back here. This is what we call a direct credit. So that's the direct credit right there, 3,555,600.
And then the other part of that narration says that and bank charges of 70,800 were deducted for this transaction. Again, when bank charges take place, we never get to know about those bank charges until we receive the bank statement. So because we never get to know about those bank charges, it means that in our balance as per cash book, those charges were not deducted. But now that we know that we were charged some bank charges and some money from our bank was removed, it means we're supposed to make the corresponding adjustment in our cash book by removing the bank charges from here as well. That's why we shall go ahead and reduce that from here. We shall say less bank charges. And the bank charges here, we have 70. Moving on to the next narration. A check of 2,410,200 from Okoth had not yet been captured by the bank. Yeah, we received a check from Okoth and it has not yet been captured by the bank. If we received a check from Okoth and this check has not yet been credited to our account or it has not yet been captured by the bank, it means that this is an uncredited check. It is more like a transaction that is in process. It might mature, it might not mature. So it is an uncredited check. Now, when we received this check in our business, we recognized that we had received that money. So in our cash book balance, part of that balance contains that amount of money that was on that check that we took to the bank. However, since the bank has not yet recognized that it has received that money, it technically means that this money is not yet in our bank. It's not yet in our possession where much as we recognized it as received because we saw the check. So because now this is an uncredited check, an uncredited check is more like, you know, it's a check that is in it's it's a transaction that is in it's in process it has not yet matured but we hope for it to mature it might not mature so an uncredited check will since we have not yet exactly received that money in our coffers we are supposed to deduct it so remember that is an issue we deal with here so we shall remove this from here we shall say less uncredited check and this uncredited check is worth 2 million 410 that is our uncredited check right there next narration a sum of 192000 received from a customer was entered in the cash book as 19200 it has been entered in the cash book as 19200 and has been banked and properly recorded on the bank statement. So again, this is a matter that is to be sorted in the adjusted cash book. This is an error. And uh, we are seeing that this error took place in the cash book. Remember, we said errors that take place in the bank statement are handled down here. However, this is an error that took place in the cash book. So we are going to handle it up here. However, what is the extent of this error? Has this balance been overstated or has it been understated as a result of that error? So let's try and examine the effect of this error. Remember the narration here is telling us that a sum of 192,000 received from a customer. So meaning we received some money from this customer. However, it says that this, this was recorded very well in the bank statement. So in the bank statement, it was well recorded. However, in the cash book, it was recorded as 19,200. So if you look at the figure there, we had 19, 192,000. This is how much was received. However, in the cash book instead, we recorded 19,200. So it, in other words, we recorded less money than we received. So when we subtract this from that, what is the error? The error when you subtract this minus that, you end up with 172,800. So this is the error. So if you look at this error, if this is what we recorded in our cash book, yet we received more money, it means that this cash book balance is has been understated by this amount of money. Yeah, We recognized we got 19,200 
but in actual sense we received more so when you subtract the two this is the error so our cash book balance has been understated by this amount of money so to correct this error in the adjusted cash book we are supposed to add this error back this is an error that has taken place in the cash book so we add it back so that we adjust this balance to its to 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 its true figure so it means that as this error is going to be added under here so we shall go ahead and say error in the cash book then second last we have what we call ledger fees for the month of the bank statement were 36360 now ledger fees it's just the same way you see bank charges these are charges the reasoning we used when we are filling in bank charges it's the same with ledger fees these are amounts of money that are deducted from our bank account without people of the business knowing you only get to know of those charges when you receive the bank statement and so because the, that amount of money was deducted from your bank you go ahead and deduct it from here as well so that the two are coinciding so we shall write that down here as ledger fees and then finally we have these three checks that were outstanding as at 30th november 2016 we have three checks that were outstanding as at 30th november 2016 so those are the checks that have been outstanding these checks simply represent that hey we presented the, we gave these checks to maybe our suppliers there are some people we paid off using checks and these checks have not yet been presented to our bank account so or they've not been presented to our bank so that this money is deducted when we issued these checks we subtracted the this this uh, this amount of this balance is exclusive of those amounts of money that we say we gave out when we issued these checks however these checks when we get got the bank statement we realized that these checks they're outstanding these checks have not yet been presented so in other words it means technically that that money is still on our bank account so because that money is still on our bank account we are going to go ahead and add it back to this balance so these are what we call unpresented checks so we are going to add them right here so we shall say add unpresented checks so the unpresented checks we have here we have the first one which is i'll write it here so we have finished filling in Though that's the end of the the data that has that was extracted from the records of Juma. That is how much we have been able to deal with it. This is how we have um, handled it. Now, let me just mention this. Of course, when you're dealing with these kinds of numbers in the exam, um, it's important that you know the template that you're going to use for purposes of saving time. When you encounter a number like a bank reconciliation statement in this kind of format like i have done first draw the template but of course as you're drawing the template you do not know what you're going to write here you don't know what you're going to write here you don't know how much you're going to write here what you need to do is as you write it up just make sure that you leave enough space here just leave enough space there just leave enough space where you're supposed to fill in the variables of course that is up to your judgment how much space you should leave and so as you go through uh, narration by narration, like we have been doing, you feed in respectively where you, where whatever narration, whatever adjustment you're supposed to make, you feed it in respectively. Now that will enable you to be able to beat time because these kinds of numbers normally take a lot of time. So that being said, we have filled in everything. Now let's go ahead and start with the mathematics. Of course, this is the arithmetic, the, the, the balance as per cash book. So we're going to add these two figures. When we add these two figures, what we end up with is 3 million. When this to that is 3 million. When we add this to that, we shall end up here with 24, 511, 920. 
So we have these ones. We are going to remove, deduct from the cash book balance. So when we add up all these right there, what do we end up with here? We end up with 384. So remember, this is less. When we add up this and end up this, we're supposed to subtract. So we put this in brackets to show that we're subtracting it. So it is this minus that. What do we end up with? This minus that is going to give us the balance as per our adjusted cash book. The balance as per our adjusted cash book is the balance that we are going to put in the balance sheet. This minus that is going to give us 24. 1 to 7, 800. So this balance as per our adjusted cash book is what we take to the drive, to, to the balance sheet. Then of course we still have other things to add up. Now we are reconciling this to reach the bank statement balance. This, the bank reconciliation. So we add up these. When we add up these, we end up here with 3 million. 816 360 when we get this figure we add it to that when we add these two because this figure is supposed to be added so what we add up with we end up with is 27 944 160 Of course, from here, we're supposed to subtract this. So this is less 2,410,200. When we subtract this, this minus that, we're going to end up with balance as per bank statement, which so happens to be 25, 533, nine, and now when you finally look at our narration here, you find that we've been able to reconcile. This is the bank reconciliation. We have been able to move from our balance as per cash book and we were able to build up and we were able to arrive at the balance as per bank statement, which is 25 million five hundred and thirty three nine sixty. And when you look at our earlier write up here, this figure and that figure are the same. This is the balance as per the bank statement according to our extraction and when we did this reconciliation we were able to arrive at that figure so that means that we have truly been able to successfully reconcile the bank um, our cash book with the bank statement of course in this formula or in this method we began with the bank balance as per the cash book and we were able to reconcile up to the bank statement balance the other alternative is to start as with balance as per bank statement and we reconcile up to the cash book. It's the reverse of this. I find this approach much easier. However, if you think you want me to do the other approach where we begin with the balance as per bank statement and we work backwards to arrive at the balance as per cash book, you can let me know in the comment section below. We shall be doing another worked example on bank reconciliation statement in our upcoming session. Casibante has prepared draft financial statements for the year ended 30th November 2016, which shows a bank balance of 14,394,700 as per cash book. Subsequently, the following discoveries were made. Now what you're seeing on your screen are the discoveries that were ex um, discovered in Casibante's books. Now. In light of those discoveries, we are being required to prepare a computation of the bank balance to be included in Casibante's balance sheet as at 30th November 2016. When they ask us to make a computation of the bank balance that is supposed to show up in Casibante's books, in the light of those discoveries that you have seen on your screen, they are actually asking us to adjust the cash book balance. We had a cash book balance of 14,394,700. That cash book balance is the balance before there were any adjustments. Now, in light of the discoveries that have been listed on your screen, we are supposed to adjust the cash book balance accordingly 
and the adjusted cash book balance we are going to arrive at is the one that is supposed to be posted to the balance sheet and of course um the roman two of what is required is that we are supposed to prepare a bank reconciliation statement as at that date so by the end of this session we will have constructed an adjusted cash book and afterwards we will have made a bank reconciliation statement my name is Arnold Rangakuramia and this is Kisembo Academy without any further ado let's get started with the first narrative of the discoveries that were made check number 1001 dated 14th November 2016 for two million one hundred and ninety eight thousand four hundred paid to a supplier has been recorded in the cash book as two million three hundred and seventy eight thousand four hundred so there is a check that was issued by casivante the business however when it issued this check there was more money recorded than usual well before we get into that first um discovery um let me give a brief background here when we are preparing a bank reconciliation statement, it is because we want to make sure that the balance in the bank statement is the same as the balance in the cash book. Sometimes there are times when the bank statement may be having items that are not listed in the cash book and it is on that notice that we go ahead and adjust the cash book. We adjust the cash book so that we include details in the cash book uh, new details that were not originally there. In other words, we include details that were in the bank statement that are not in the cash book. That is the process of adjusting the cash book. Now, when we are preparing the bank reconciliation statement, one thing you should know is that there are three items that are reflected in the bank reconciliation statement. Those are unpresented checks, uncredited checks and errors that happen in the bank statement. So as we go through these discoveries that uh, as we go through these discoveries um, when we find a discovery that has something to do with an unpresented check or an uncredited check or an error that happened in the bank statement those shall not be handled here they shall be handled in the bank reconciliation statement. The rest of the other things like direct deposits, direct credits, direct debits, uh, things like bank charges, things like errors in the cash book and so forth shall be handled in the adjusted cash book. So let's get back. We, like I had already mentioned, there's a check that we issued worth 2,198,400. We paid it to a supplier. But when we were recording in the cash book, instead we recorded a bigger figure. This is what I'm saying. This is what we paid the supplier. And remember, whenever we play a supplier, according to the double entry rules, we're supposed to credit the cash book to make sure that to, to crediting the cash book means that we have paid out money. So we paid this much. However, when we paid this much, instead we recorded something bigger than what we paid so if we recorded something bigger than what we paid it means that our cash book balance is understated what i mean is that we deducted more money than we should so if this is how much we paid and this is what we recorded the difference between these two figures is 180,000. it means that our cash book balance has 180,000 less than it should be. By the way, what cash book balance are we talking about? I think that is something that I had forgotten. Let's first go back a bit. At the very beginning, it shows that um, the bank balance as at 30th November is 14,394,700. Let's first write that. So the balance uh, brought down from the balance brought down the balance brought down is 14,394,000. So on 30th November, the balance brought down was 14,394,700. And so it is this balance that we are talking about here. 
when we say that when we get this error, when we subtract this from that, our error is 180,000. It means that our balance here is understated by 180,000. So if it has been understated by 180,000, that is when we were recording, we recorded this figure in the, on the credit side. This is what we recorded. But in us, when we were recording this figure on the credit side, we recorded an excess of 180,000 on the credit side. So to correct this error, since in this, this figure that we, 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 we recorded on the credit side includes an excess of 180,000, we are going to go ahead and debit the cash book with this 180,000. By debiting the cash book by this 180,000, we are reducing this figure that we had earlier credited by this much so that it eventually equalizes the true figure. This is how much we paid, but this is what was recorded. So that's how we are going to correct this error and this is exactly what we are doing now. So we shall go ahead and prepare our cash book like that. We shall see. So that error has been corrected. Let's go on to the next narration. On the second, we are being told that our bank charges of 200,000 and bank interest received of 183,920 appeared on the bank statement but had not been entered into the cash book. So bank charges of 200,000 means that some money was deducted from our bank account and this amount is 200,000. So if money on our bank statement was deducted, 200,000 was deducted to pay bank charges. So it means you're supposed to go ahead and do the same in the cash book. We deduct money in the cash book. So it means that in the cash book, we are going to credit because with the cash book, when you credit, that's when you're reducing the cash book balance. When you debit, you're increasing the cash book balance. So we're going to credit. We shall say on 30th, this is happening on the same day because we are making these adjustments on the last day. So on 30th, we bank charges. So the same narration continues to say that and bank interest received of 183,920 appeared on the bank statement but had not been entered into the cash book. So we had interest income or bank interest that received the, that, that appeared on the bank statement. Now interest income increases the amount of money we have in the bank and this increase in money had not been recognized in the cash book. But now that we've looked at the bank statement and we know that we have some interest income, it increases the amount of cash we have. So we are going to go ahead and debit that in the cash book to reflect that increase in money. So we move to the next narration. The recently received bank statement showed that a check of 7 million 42,000 received from Amate Bank on 10th November 2016 and credited in the bank statement on 14th of November 2016 had been dishonored and debited in the bank statement on 30th of November 2016. Let's go over this very slowly. We recently received this bank statement and we showed that a check of 7 million, so there's a check of 7 million we received from Amate. This check had earlier been banked. It means we had recognized it as money that had come into our coffers. So meaning that in the beginning, we received this check of Amate. When we received it, it means we went ahead and debited our cash book to not to identify or to recognize an entry of cash or a receipt of money in our business. However, this money that they are talking about was later on refuted by the bank or the check associated with the money was dishonored so meaning if the check was dishonored it simply means that that money is no longer in our bank so we do the reverse if it if the check was dishonored it means that we are going to reverse the earlier entry we made and so it means you're going to go ahead and credit the cash book to recognize that the the the, the, the money we had earlier debited in our cash book to recognize as received has been the check has been dishonored so we're going to go ahead and do the reverse entry and credit we credit it to subtract it from this balance 
we have the next it's showing that a check dated 23rd March 2016 for 1,879,200 paid to Gombo had not yet appeared on any bank statement. So there is a check we issued dated 23rd March 2016 of that amount, 1,879,000. We paid it to Gombo, but uh, this check had not yet been you know it's not yet it has not been reflected on any bank statement so now if you look at this check for starters where we issued a check and this check has not reflected on the bank statement this looks like an unpresented check yeah we say that an unpresented check is a check whereby you've issued it to your supplier or somebody that you owe money but they've just not yet presented it to your bank for for your account to be debited but then when you look at this the date you take a look at this the, the thing says that a check dated 23rd march 2016 we issued this check in march of 2016 the cash book we are do we were working on here is november now if you to count from november you'll find that uh 23rd March 2016 is more than six months. It's more than six months back from the date when we are preparing this bank reconciliation statement. So that means that this check that we issued has expired. Now, when a check expires, it means that the monies there are, it, it's useless, it can't be cashed. And so an expired check is handled in the adjusted cash book balance. So I think this is a point for you to note that when it comes to the bank reconciliation statement, we shall only recognize a check as an uncredited check or an unpresented check if it's within six months from when we are, as in if it is within six months from the time we are preparing the bank reconciliation statement. Because an uncredited check and an unpresented check simply means that that check is in process. The transaction is in process. It's still loading. It's not yet complete. It could be accepted. It could be dishonored, but it is in process. So those ones, we handle them in the bank reconciliation statement. However, when you look at this check we are handling, this check was issued to Gombo, but it was written on 23rd March. 23rd March is more than six months backwards from the date we are adjusting this cash book to, to go ahead and make the bank reconciliation statement. So that means that there is no hope that this check will ever be cashed because it means that this check has been expired. So because the check has been expired, we shall go ahead and handle it in the adjusted cash book. So for this case, the check is that has expired is 1,879,200. This means that when we were issuing this check, we went ahead and credited our cash book to show that we have given out money. Now that the check has expired, it means that we need to add this money back to our cash book. So it means that we shall go ahead and debit the cash book. To, to recognize that that check, the money on that check comes back to our business. So that's how we're going to go in our adjustments. We shall debit. So I guess moving forward, you should be very careful the dates that are written in these narrations. Moving on to the next, a check number of 1002 for 777,080 had been recorded twice as a credit in the cash book. So if it has been recorded twice as a credit, it means that's an error. It is supposed to have been recorded once. But if it has been recorded twice, so it means that we need to remove the second time it was recorded. So if it was recorded twice in the cash book to correct the error, we go ahead and do the reverse of the same figure of, of that check. So um, we are going to go ahead and debit the cash book with, with the amount of one of those checks.
So moving on to the next, we have checks totaling to 10,378,608 paid according to the cash book during November 2016 were not presented to the bank for payment until December 2016. So we have checks that were not presented. These are what we call unpresented checks. Now, we do not deal with unpresented checks in the cash book, so we shall leave that out. We shall deal with that when we are dealing with the bank reconciliation statement. So moving on to the next, a standing order payment of 29th November 2016 to National Water and Sewerage Corporation of 158,000 was not recorded in the cash book. So there's a standing order that was not recorded here. A standing order in the bank statement means that money was paid. In this case, money was paid to National Water and Sewerage Corporation, probably to pay a water bill. So if money was paid in the bank statement, it means we're supposed to recognize that payment in the cash book as well. And so we are going to go ahead and credit the cash book with that amount. So moving on to the next, an amount, 3,369,400 which had been credited in the bank statement on 25th of November 2016 did not appear in the cash book. So this amount had been credited in the bank statement, but it didn't appear in the cash book. This is what we call a direct credit. This simply means that somebody went to the bank and paid money to the, to the business bank account and deposited money into the business bank account and back at the business premises, we were not aware until we received the bank statement. So this being a direct credit, it shows that we got money in our bank account. So we're supposed to recognize that we got money as well in the cash book. And so for that matter, therefore, we're going to go ahead and debit the cash book. So the amount is 3369400 So we are going to go and debit the cash book. This is what we call a direct credit. Moving on to the next, um, amount received last in the last days of November 2016, totaling to 14,247,620 and recorded in the cash book appear on the bank statement of 12th of December 2016. I need you to take note of those dates. Yeah, we received money. And uh, the, of course, the money we received money, we received money. That is, those are checks we received. We received money in the last days of November 2016. Remember, we are adjusting this book as at 30th November 2016. And so even the bank statement that we'll be having when we are adjusting this cash book will be as at that date, 30th November 2016. However, the narration continues to say that this amount of money that we received, which is worth 14,247,620, and this money which was recorded in a, in the cash book appears on the bank statement on the 12th of December 2016. So we received some checks. We recognized that we had received those checks in our cash book by debiting our cash book. And we went ahead and presented um, and took those checks to the bank. However, when we took those checks to the bank, the bank did not reflect those checks on our bank account. In other words, these checks were not credited to our bank account by the time we are doing this cash book. Remember, we are doing this cash book as on 30th of November. But if you look at the narration, it says that these checks appeared on the bank statement on 12th of December. Now, 12th of December is a date that is in the future or in front. So it means that right now those checks as at 30th November, those checks are considered uncredited checks because they were credited after the bank statement had come. OK, so at the time the bank statement came, those checks had not been credited. So those ones are treated as uncredited checks. And when it comes to uncredited checks, that is a matter that we handle in the bank reconciliation statement. And that is something that we are going to do towards the end of this session. So let's skip it for now. So and finally, moving on to the 10th narration, it says that Petwa, 
a supplier was given a check number 1004 dated 27th november 2016 for 356000 and this was recorded in the cash book okay she returned it and received cash for the same amount on 30th november 2016 so what's the interpretation of this we gave petwa a check worth 356000 so when we gave petwa a check we went ahead and credited the cash book to show that we have given away money worth 356000 we recorded it but then what happens is that petwa does not take the check to the bank but instead brings the check back to us and instead he's given cash worth 356000 so in other words in the credit side of the cash book there is an entry that was made when we gave when we issued a check of 356000 then when the uh, petwa brings back the check we pay him cash worth the same amount and uh, it means that according to our records we recorded that we had given petwa money twice now that is an error in the cash book so if we re we, we credited it two times to correct this error we need to reduce the the amount that we credited once so in other words to correct that we're supposed to go ahead and debit the cash book to to cancel out the double entry this way by debiting it by 356000 i hope you get the interpretation it means we recorded on the credit side two times the first time when we are giving when we give the person the check and the second time when we give them cash so we need to offset one of those times by debiting it once here so we shall go ahead and say now that we have recorded everything that we need to record let's go ahead and uh, balance our cash book so that we find our adjusted cash book balance so we'll go ahead and balance So from our adjusted cash book balance, we end up with 13,740,300. And this so happens to be our adjusted cash book balance. In other words, this is our cash book balance before adjustment. So when we make the necessary adjustments, we go ahead and come up with 13,740,300. This is our adjusted cash book balance. So in preparing the bank reconciliation statement, we are going to go ahead and begin with our adjusted cash book balance and go ahead and include our uncredited checks and un unpresented checks and we'll go ahead and come up with the balance as per the bank statement so we have done part one of the requirements to adjust this cash book to a balance that is going to be posted to Casivante's balance sheet and so this adjusted cash book balance is the one that is going to be posted to Casivante's balance sheet so now let's go ahead and construct Casibante's bank reconciliation statement. So before you is a template we are going to fill for Casibante's bank reconciliation statement as at 30th November 2016. So our adjusted cash book balance from what we got our, uh, our adjusted cash book balance we got uh, it was 13 million right here 13 so that's our adjusted cash book balance right there so of course that being our adjusted cash book balance we're supposed to add the unpresented checks remember we're supposed to add these unpresented checks because this is money we had recognized in our cash book as money we have given out however we have issued these checks we have recognized that this money has been given out but the people we have given this money to have not presented these checks to the bank so technically this money has not yet been subtracted from the money that we have so we go ahead and add it back to this figure so unpresented checks we add 
so that's the figure for unpresented check according to our narration the unpresented checks were the narration number six where we're saying checks totaling to ten million three hundred and seventy eight thousand six hundred and eight paid according to the cash book during november 2016 were not presented to the bank for payment until december 2016. so those are the unpresented checks they were not presented until much later so moving on we are when we add these two we shall end up with So remove the uncredited checks. Remember we've talked about the uncredited checks before as amounts received in the last days of November 2016 totaling to 14,247,620 and recorded in the cash book appear on the bank statement after the date after 30th November that is on 12th of December 2016. So those were checks that were not yet credited as at the time of preparing this bank reconciliation statement. So we go ahead and present the figure there. So this is less 14. So this figure minus that figure is going to give us the bank statement balance, which so happens to be. And so that is Casivante's bank reconciliation statement. This brings us to the end of this session. Like this video if you like it. Be sure to subscribe if you've not yet subscribed to this YouTube channel. I encourage you to share these videos with your fellow students for their benefit. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care. Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. In today's session, we get to do a, a number on bank reconciliation statement. From what you can see on your screen is... Uh, you know, a question about Mabugu traders and uh, they're telling us that the following information um, relates to bank transactions of Mabugu traders for the month of March 2019. The cash book, that is, uh, of course, in this case, the bank column, had a debit balance of 160,054, 160,054,000, while the bank statement had a credit balance of 245,641,000 as at 31st March 2019. On further examination of the books, the cashier discovered the following discrepancies. Now from what you can see, those are the discrepancies that were discovered. And at the end of the day, they are requiring us to prepare an adjusted cash book and bank reconciliation statement. Like I have said before, in practice, when we are reconciling the bank column of the cash book in our business with what records the bank has, as revealed in the bank statement the first thing is to adjust our cash book we adjust our cash book to see whether the things the to 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 include records that are in the bank that were not reflected in the cash book and also to correct any errors that could have been carried out in the cash book all that is done in the adjusted cash book i have explained this extensively in our previous sessions and of course after adjusting the cash book through preparing the adjusted cash book then we shall go ahead and prepare the bank reconciliation statement. The overall picture of how this whole thing flows, I have explained this in our earlier sessions. So allow me in this session to go straight into answering this question. So let's go ahead and start doing and start analyzing the first discrepancy. So the first discrepancy, of course, before we get to the first discrepancy, in our adjusted cash book, we need to bring forward the adjust the cash book balance. Remember, we said that uh, if we are trying to adjust the cash book, there is a cash book we are adjusting. So let's bring the balance of that cash book we are trying to adjust. And according to the question, they are telling us that the adjusted cash book bal I mean, they are telling us that the cash book has a debit balance of one hundred and sixty fifty four thousand. So let's bring that here. So that is our adjusted cash book. Um, balance is 160 uh, 54,000. All our figures we are going to be writing in this video are in thousands, you know, the bit side and credit side right there. So, yeah, that's our adjusted cash book balance. Now, let's look at the first um, issue on 12th March payment to Mabugu traders from Buddha Diri 
by direct deposit of 3,500,000 was not cleared by the bank due to insufficient funds on the latter's account. The bank uh, fined Budadiri traders 250,000. So what happened here is that uh, this guy here, uh, Budadiri, Budadiri traders paid Mabugu traders. They paid our business, Mabugu traders. So when they pay us, they give us a check. So in our cash book, we went ahead and debited the our, our, our cash book to show that we had gotten money. So when we go ahead and uh, issue, you know, and go and deposit that check at the bank, the check bounces. So if the check bounces, it means that whereas we had previously debited uh, our cash book to show that we had received that money, 3.5 million, that money was actually not actually, it, the, the check was never materialized because there was insufficient money on Budadiri's account. So because of that, it means we are supposed to reverse the earlier debit entry we made in the cash book. And so in this case, we are going to go ahead and credit. We do the reverse of what we did earlier. So because of that discrepancy, we are going to go ahead and reduce that money from our cash book. So we are going to go ahead and credit. So Budadiri's bounced check is 3,500,000. On 15th March, Wekumba Limited make it, made a direct transfer of 16,300,000 to Mavugu Trader's bank account. This information had not yet been reflected in the cash book of Mavugu Trader's by 31st March. Okay, so this is what we call a direct deposit. Somebody went and put money on Mavugu Trader's account, but we were not, we, we didn't know about it. So that is going to be a direct transfer. So, so since we received money in the bank, so we recognize it in our cash book that we received money. So the third discrepancy on 20th March, a customer paid Mustafa 4,360,000 by check. Okay. So what customer is this? A customer paying Mustafa 4,360,000 by check. How does that connect with what we are doing? Because we are dealing with Mabugu traders. Okay, let's continue and read. So um, on 20th March, a customer paid Mustafa 4,360,000 by check. The bank erroneously credited this payment to Mabugu traders account. Okay, so this is a different customer that paid Mustafa. Maybe Mustafa is probably a different, you know, company. And... Um, Instead of uh, the bank um, crediting Mustafa's account, they went ahead and instead credited Mabugu Traders' account. In other words, Mabugu Traders received money that is not supposed to receive in their bank account, and this is an error. So this error is... And when it comes to these discrepancies that we are reading right now, for example, this is an error that was carried out in the bank statement. That one, we shall deal with it in the bank reconciliation statement. In the cash book, we only address errors that happened in the cash book. For bank reconciliation, for, for errors that take place in the bank, those ones we shall handle them in the bank reconciliation statement. So when it comes to this discrepancy number three, we shall revisit it and deal with it when we are doing the bank reconciliation statement. So let's move on to the next. Number four, a cash deposit of 1282000 by Mabugo traders was entered in error by the bank as a credit of 1,228,000. So we still recognize this, as you can see, it's an error that happened in the bank. So again, we shall revisit that when we are doing bank reconciliation. So moving on to number five. Mabugu traders paid Sironko traders by check 12,460,000, but recorded it as a credit of 11,460,000 in the cash book. So this is an error that... Let's analyze this discrepancy um, slowly by slowly. So it says that Mabugu traders paid Sironko traders by check 12,460,000 but recorded it as a credit of 11,460,000 in the cash book. So analyzing this discrepancy, uh, let me do some side work here. Let's say this was the cash book. Remember, this is the adjusted cash book. So let's see. The, let's say this was the cash book right there. Uh, that's the debit side. And this is the credit side of that cash book. And now when you look at this cash book, um, the, the questions, the, the, the statement says that Mabugu traders paid Sirongo traders by check 
twelve million four hundred sixty thousand. So if Mabugu traders paid Sironko that much money, what were we supposed to have done? When Mabugu paid that money, they were supposed to have credited. You know, Mabugu traders is supposed to have credited his account by twelve million four hundred and sixty thousand. That twelve million four hundred and sixty thousand put on the credit side of the cash book to show that that money has been paid. That was the correct treatment. However, the statement continues to say, but instead this is what happened. Like, but recorded it as a credit of eleven four hundred and sixty in the cash book. So, instead of recording this, the guy went ahead and instead recorded twelve million. Uh, you know, he recorded eleven million four hundred and sixty thousand. In the cash book this is in thousands so this was the right thing to do but instead um, this was what was recorded and so that was a discrepancy that was discovered in the book so now the question is of course this is an error that is happening in the cash book and we say we see that here it was less money instead of uh, recording 12 million four hundred sixty thousand uh, they recorded 11 million four hundred and sixty in the cash book so it means that the cash book was, you know, undercredited. So the question is that what what is the balance here? How much do we? Uh, how much is remaining for us to be able to reach this the correct figure? In the cash book, this is what was put. So it means that the cash book was undercredited, undercast. So when we what's the difference between the two? What's the error difference? So when we subtract these two, we realize that uh, it is a difference of one million shillings. In other words, when we were giving out the money, we, we gave out twelve million four hundred and sixty. That is what this is what happened. But in recording, we recorded less that money by one million. So to f fix this error, it means that in the adjusted cash book, we are supposed to credit the adjusted cash book by that difference, so that. It's in more like we are adding this 1,000 to this so that we are able to arrive at the actual figure, the actual amount of money that was actually given out. So it means in our adjusted cash book, we shall go ahead and credit uh, 1 million. And that 1 million is as a result of a cash book error. So we have fixed that error in the cash book. So moving on to the next discrepancy, they are saying that on 22nd of March, Oundo made a direct credit transfer of 5140000 to Mabugu Traders Bank account. The cash book had not been updated with this payment as at 31st March. So yes, the, 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 when we talk about a direct credit, it means money was put in our bank, but we were not aware until we get we got the bank statement. So if uh, on that day, 22nd March, Owundo made a direct credit transfer of that March to our account, so it means that if we received money in the bank, we're supposed to recognize that money also as received in our cash book. And since it was not recognized in the cash book, so in the adjusted cash book, we shall recognize it by debiting the adjusted cash book balance by that amount. So in this case, the amount is 5140000 and that is what we shall put here. And this is the a direct credit. or we'll call it a direct deposit. You can either call it direct deposit or direct credit. Next. So the following checks were deposited in the bank by Mabugu traders on 30th March, but were not reflected on the bank statement. So when we have checks that uh, these Mabugu traders went and deposited to the bank, but these checks were not reflected on the bank statement, it means that, um, you know, these are pending transactions. We have probably our customers that have paid us by check. We have gotten these checks. We have taken them to the bank so that they credit our bank account. But the checks have just not yet been, they have just not yet matured. The transaction are still pending. We do not know whether these checks will bounce. We do not know. We are not sure if they will mature. So these are pending transactions and we, we, it's what we call uncredited checks. 
from our past sessions, you know that as far as uncredited checks are concerned, those ones are things that we deal with in the bank reconciliation statement, and we shall come to that. We shall revisit this when we are doing the first the bank reconciliation statement. Let's finish up with the adjusted cash book. So let's move on to the next. A check payment of 7600000 by Kagula Traders to Mabugu Traders account was um, debited by the bank as 6700000 So if you look at that one, that is also an error that took place in the bank. We do deal with that in the you know, bank reconciliation statement. Moving on. Discrepancy number nine. Checks, all those checks that you're seeing on the screen are checks that are paid to clients, but they are not reflected on the bank statement. This is also another pending transaction. These are like, you know, maybe your suppliers. You have paid them using your check, and this, uh, these suppliers of yours are supposed to present these checks to the bank so that money is reduced from the Mabugu Traders account to pay them. However, when you did so, you went ahead and credited your, your cash book to show that you have given out the money. But these people that you have given these checks have not presented them to the bank. And so as a result, the money on the bank is still there. This is what we call unpresented checks. The checks have not yet been presented. And we handle that in the bank reconciliation statement because this also falls in the category of transactions that are still pending. So moving on to the next uh, discrepancy. Other transactions during the period that were reflected in the bank statement but not in the cash book were as follows. Remember now here we are in the adjusted cash book. We are dealing with transactions that were reflected in the bank but did not, were not reflected in the cash book. So these are the ones that they're talking about. So we have bank charges. Of course, bank charges, these are things that take place in the bank. We are never aware until we get the bank you know, the bank statement. So we have bank charges of 255000 There are 245000 Then we have ledger fees. We are crediting these because these are transactions that took place in the bank. There were deductions in the bank that we people, the business was not aware of, so nothing was reflected in the cash book. And now we are trying to make sure that they are reflected in the cash book. So the ledger fees were 25000 Then we have insurance, 190000 Then uh, definitely we have loan deductions. Deductions, we have 545. All right, then we have interest on deposits. The interests on deposits, we are 250. This was money coming in to our account. Then we have the dividend income. That is income, so we debited 6,500,000. Then we have excise duty, excise duty. That is money getting out of our, our, our you know, bank. So we credit it on the cash book. That is excise duty. And then also finally, Wagogo, who provides meals to staff members, was paid by check number 00106. Uh, the, the, the amount was 1500000 on the 23rd of March. Of course, we are doing this as at 31st March. So by 23rd of March, that still falls within that period. Uh -huh. So he returned it and uh, he returned it on 29th of March, that is still before this date, okay, and was given cash of the same amount. This payment had initially been captured in the cash book. So initially, uh, when we paid this guy uh, 1500000 we credited yeah, the cash book when we paid him using the check. But then later on, this money is returned. So when, of course, when that money is returned, he is given cash. So uh, when he's given the cash, the, you know, the, 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 the transactions are carried out, the recordings are made, the 1.5 again is credited. So meaning the earlier transaction, this is what this discrepancy is trying to reveal, that the earlier transaction where money was given out by check of 1.5, was not reversed and so we are going to do it here we are going to fix that error here now that's an error in the 
cash book. It means our cash book is understated by 1.5. And so we need to, 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 to cancel out that check transaction. Remember at the beginning, uh, Wagogo was given 1.5M and we credited that uh, we credited our cash book. So when he brings back the check, we did not do the correspond. We did not cancel out this credit by debiting the 1.5 here, so that it cancels out. So let's do it in the adjusted cash book. So here we shall go ahead and say, Wagogo check. Wagogo returned that money. We we what we, since we had credited it earlier, now we debit to cancel out the 1.5. So that is one million five hundred thousand. So looking at that, uh, I think we have finished going through all the discrepancies and uh, what happens in the cash book, we have been able to put what what should have happened in the cash book. We have done that in the adjusted cash book balance and now it's time for us to go ahead and balance off this account and find out which balance this cash book has. So that is our adjusted cash book. And from our adjusted cash book, we're able to get a balance of 184, 149. This is a debit balance. The debit balance simply means that the debit side is bigger than the credit side by this amount. So in other words, according to our cash book, we still have this amount of money in our cash book. So we're going to go ahead and do the bank reconciliation statement. And uh, when we are beginning with the bank reconciliation statement, uh, the format we are going to use is going to be such that we are going to begin with the adjusted cash book balance. The adjusted cash book balance is the balance that we carry to our financial statements. It's the one that will be reflected in our balance sheet or call it the statement of financial position. And also it will be the one that we shall be referring to when we are drafting our statement of cash flows, we shall be doing statement of cash flows in future sessions. So moving on to the bank reconciliation statement, here we go. So this is our bank reconciliation statement. And of course, um, uh, we, like I said, we are going to begin with our adjusted cash book balance and our adjusted cash book balance here is this right there. So that is what we are going to begin with here. So we shall go ahead and say that our adjusted cash book balance is 189, I mean 184. It's a, it, it's, it's a debit balance, right? 184. One, four, nine. That right there is our adjusted cash book balance. So now this being our adjusted cash book balance, now we are going to look at um, in our you know bank reconciliation statement. We are going to look at what we are going to add, what we are going to subtract. Um, then from there we are also going to account for the errors that are in the bank. Remember. The errors that are in the bank are errors that we cannot change because the bank statement is not prepared by us. It is a document of the bank. So if there is any error in the bank, we shall have to respect that error and account for it here and show. So right here, we are beginning with the adjusted cash book balance and we are supposed to build the adjusted cash book balance up to down here where we are going to connect to the bank statement balance. In our in an ideal world, um, after you know getting our balance here, you know, our adjusted cash book balance, which so happens to be this figure, this adjusted cash book balance is in essence, if there were no checks, no pending checks, no unpresented checks, no uncredited checks and no errors in the bank, then it would mean that this balance was supposed to be the same as our cash book balance. Now, if we are to go back to our question, our question states that uh, the bank statement has a credit balance of 245,600 and I mean 245 million 641,000. So since that figure is not in any way the same as this, so we are going. To, that's why we are preparing a bank reconciliation statement, and uh, we are hoping that by the time we are doing all this, whatever we are going to do to this figure, 
down here we are supposed to arrive at you know that figure the figure we are talking about is the bank balance and the balance as per our bank statement is actually So this is our bank balance right there. So as we are reconciling this, we are going to begin with this figure. We are going to add and subtract whatever we need to subtract. And whatever we are writing here, we are trying to explain why this figure is different from this. These two are supposed to be the same as at that point, but since they are different, we are now explaining why they are different. And so in our explanations, in our flow, the additions and subtractions we're supposed to do are supposed to eventually lead down here to this figure. So in case we do our bank reconciliation and our final figure here, which will be the bank statement figure, is not this, then it means we have not been successful in reconciling this cash book balance to that. That's why it's called a bank reconciliation statement. So let's get started. So our target is to make sure that we arrive at this figure down here. So looking at our adjusted cash book balance right there, it is that. So now what are we supposed to add? Now this is our adjusted cash book balance. So now what? Um, there are some checks we are supposed to add to this adjusted cash book balance. Now what are these kind of checks that we are going to add here? The thing here is that if we are to add these checks, it means that we are adding money back to the cash book balance. This is money that we had subtracted from our cash book. In other words, money we had credited, but now we are adding it back. These right here are checks that we gave to, you know, our suppliers, maybe people we are paying off. We give them checks. These people were supposed to go and, you know, present these checks to the bank so that uh, they get the, uh, their money is paid from our bank account, but they have not yet presented these checks to the bank. And because they've not yet presented these checks to the bank, uh, it, it, means, it, it, it means that you know, the transaction is pending. They are yet to go and pick that money. So um, since our cash book balance, when we gave out these checks, we removed that money from our cash book balance. Now we need to add that money back, you know? because it means that uh, in our cash book we removed that money but since that money in our bank balance is still there they have not yet picked it so we add it back so that's why we are saying we add those unpresented checks begin with that check number we have check number double zero one zero five let me write it squeeze it up there because of space and so that check is worth it was not presented it's twenty five million three hundred thousand then we have check number zero zero one zero six this check is thirty five two hundred thousand Um, then we have check number 00107, it is 27, 346, then we have check number 00109, this check is that, then we have check number 00110. This is three two million three hundred and ninety. Then also we are supposed to go ahead and remove the un you know these are the we've added the unpresented checks. Now we're supposed to go ahead and from this cash book adjusted cash book balance we go ahead and remove the uncredited checks. Why do we remove the uncredited checks? Uncredited checks are checks that are coming to us from our clients. or call them our customers. They've paid us by check. So when they pay us by check, it means that right here in our cash book balance, we added that money. After adding that money, we took these checks to the bank. But when we took these checks to the bank, by the time 
we received you know our bank statement this money that we was paid to us by our clients via the check is not yet reflected in this balance it's not yet there it is a pending transaction the bank has not yet credited our account with that money so since that money is not has not yet arrived here and yet for us when we were receiving this money we went ahead and added it in our cash book since in the bank it's not yet there so it means we go ahead and remove it from our cash book as well because remember we are trying to build this to reconcile to this figure so since uh, these checks that we are calling the uncredited checks we recognize that we had received that money in the bank in the cash book but the bank has not yet you know added that figure here so let's remove it so that's why we shall come here and say less uncredited checks and so from our uncredited checks according to our question they are quite a number we have here now take note all these figures here are in thousands yeah so now let's look at the errors now remember with errors, we are going to analyze these errors like this. We are going to look at the error and ask ourselves. Remember, uh, as we are trying to do this cash book, we are trying to arrive at this. We are reconciling this figure to there. Why are these two figures different? So this is an explanation of why this figure is uh, and that these two figures are different. So when it comes to bank errors, these are errors that took place here. So now we are going to analyze the error and ask ourselves what does the error do to this bank? If the error is going to overstate the bank balance or it's going to increase the bank balance more than usual, it means we're going to add it to that figure as well. If the bank error undercasts or uh, undercasts the bank balance, then we're going to reduce it well let me explain it as we analyze error by error so we have let's revisit some of our discrepancies we went uh, going on to number three here it says that on 20th march a customer paid mustafa four million three hundred and sixty by check so it means that four million three hundred and sixty thousand uh, so if you look at that you realize that uh, the bank but the bank erroneously credited this payment to Mabugu traders. So you realize that, you see, it means that in this bank balance, within this money, this money contains 4,360,000 shillings, this bank balance, this money. It contains 4,360,000. But this 4,360,000 was not at all recognized in our books, in our cash book, it was not because it was not our money we don't know about it this was an error by the bank the bank was supposed to have paid another client of its of his called mustafa but instead it gave the money to us so within this bank balance there is that error now since we are trying to explain why this figure is not the same as that this error of two million i mean this error of uh four million three hundred and sixty thousand where the bank erroneously gave us that money or credited our account by money means that this bank balance has been overstated by that amount we do not have that amount here so this this has been overstated so it means since our bank balance has been overstated by four million three hundred and sixty thousand as an error so it means that we are going to add it there Remember, our, we want to make sure that we arrive at this figure. So if there's an error here that increases the bank balance, we make sure that we add it here also. If there's an error here that reduces the bank balance, then we shall reduce it to. So this error here, it's like they gave us more money in the bank, but it is not our money. They gave us more money than we should. So we shall add it here. 
to this figure since that money is not here. In other words, uh, the logic here is that what happened in the bank account for it here. What happened in the bank respect what happened in the bank. So um, here we have an error. The bank error is of 4 million 360. So that's the bank error there. We add it there. Then let's move on to the other error. We have a cash deposit of 1,282,000 by Mbuga traders that was entered in error in the bank as a credit of 1,228,000. Let me analyze that error on a different sheet of paper. So this is an error that is taking place in the bank, okay? So let's say this is the bank. So uh, our discrepancy here shows that a cash deposit of 1,280,000 by Mabugu traders, this is the debit and this is the credit side of the bank. Now remember when it comes to the bank, things change. I hope you know that, that when we are getting money in the bank, our bank is credited and when we money is being removed from the bank, it's debited. I explained that in our earlier sessions as to why. So, Mabugu traders paid Sirongo, I mean, uh, a cash deposit of 1,282,000 by Mabugu traders was entered in error by the bank as another figure. So, the correct figure is 1,282,000. This is a cash deposit to our bank and that is what was supposed to have been, this is what is supposed to have been put there. However, what happens is that instead the bank goes ahead and makes an error. And when it makes an error, instead it credits our bank with 1,228,000. So if you look at these two figures, we were given this amount of money. That's the money we have. We, we, that's the money we deposited, but instead the bank went ahead and instead deposited this. This is what the bank recorded. So when you look at this error, did the, the, did the bank record less money? Did the bank record more money? And by how much did it do so? So we are going to subtract these two figures and find the, the, the error, the discrepancy. So, so when we subtract the two figures, you realize that we are going to end up with 54. So there's a difference of 54, so meaning that this 54 is an error. That is the error that the bank made when we subtract this minus that. We deposited this amount of money, but instead the bank went ahead and credited less money than we actually deposited. So it means that um, our bank balance was is, is the error is making our bank balance to reduce by 54,000, yeah? So because it's making our bank balance to reduce by 54,000, and yet for us here in our cash book when we were depositing that money, we recognized this entire amount, the 54,000 was entirely recognized here. In other words, according to us here in the cash book, we, depo we, we recognize that we have received the entire amount but the bank instead recognized less money and the less money it recognized it it, uh, it recognized that money less by 54000 that means that our bank balance has an error that is making this bank balance to become less than it should be so it is making it less by 54000 that is what it means and now here if you come to our bank reconciliation statement, since we want to explain why this figure and this are not the same, it means that in our explanation here, we are saying that, oh, in here, in, in our bank, you know, in our cash book balance, we are having this entire amount, but our bank instead has this. And this, by our bank, bank having this figure, it is actually an error that is by 54,000 less than what we should have here. So since our balance, our bank has that error of 54,000, so let's also go ahead and reduce that 54,000 from there so that we are able to agree with what is in the bank. The goal here is to make sure that our cash book balance eventually agrees with our bank statement balance 
in a way we are trying to explain why this figure is different from that one so uh, it means uh, so here we shall come and say we will reduce so it is an error an error of 54,000 so I'll simply come here and put 54 remember all these figures here are in thousands Then we have one more error to analyze. A check payment of 7,600,000 by Gagula traders to Mavugu traders account was debited by the bank as that. As, as instead they debited it as 6,700,000. Let's analyze that error as well. So let's analyze this error. Uh -huh. We have our bank here. So this is our bank. That's where the error took place. Okay, this is the debit side and then the credit side of the bank statement. I'm just using a T account to illustrate this to you. And I hope you are aware that when it comes to the bank, when our bank account increases, the bank account is credited. And when our bank account reduces, it is debited. That is according to the bank statement where I explained why this is so in our previous sessions. So let's proceed. Now we have a check payment of 7,600,000 by Kagula traders to Mavugu traders was debited by the bank as 6,700,000. So uh, let's first look at what was true. The correct thing here is that we received money, 7,600,000. So we received money of 7,600,000. So if we received money, it means our bank credited our account by 7,600,000 right there, okay? But now what happens is that instead, uh, so, so it means that we, uh, when we, our bank debited that money, or when our bank, it means that when we received this 7,600,000, for us, we went ahead and put it there in our cash book balance, you know? we debited our cash book to show that we received that money. So this money, according to us in the business, we have the 7,600,000 included in this balance that we have quoted this money. So now when this money goes to the bank, instead of the bank crediting our account, like the way it is here, it instead, uh, the, the, uh, the statement says, instead the, the bank goes ahead and debits this 7,600,000. So this was the correct thing to do, but the bank didn't do it. Instead, it went ahead and debited our account. So now what does this mean? It means that there are two things that have happened here. Number one, the bank has not recognized that we got the money in its records. It didn't recognize the 7.6 the 7 million, that is one and to add salt to the wound instead it reduced more money so in other words it's more like a double injury here first of all you've not recognized that we've gotten the money but you've not only failed to recognize that we've gotten the money but you've gone ahead and reduced more money from our account in error so what this means is that as far as this bank statement is concerned number one it does not recognize the 7.6 and number two it goes ahead and reduces the seven another 7.6 so it means that um, our bank balance here is undercast or it is less by this figure two times let me repeat this this figure here has 7.6 we received money 7.6 which we already have in the bank I mean, which we, already, we, which we already recognized in our cash book, that we got 7.6M, but the bank didn't recognize that money. So that is error number one. So meaning that this bank balance does not recognize the 7.6 we got. So it's already less by 7.6. So it is less by 7,600,000. That's the first step. It is less, this bank balance is less by seven million six hundred thousand why because the balance the bank didn't credit it this was the right thing to do but the bank did credit it but on top of it not crediting our our account by seven million six hundred thousand it instead went ahead and debited it 
that is the second issue now. In other words, on top of not recognizing that we've got the money, making this balance not to be recognizing that money, it went ahead and further reduced money from our account. This so it again went ahead and instead reduced seven million six hundred thousand from our account. So meaning that our account was later this balance here, the account was later reduced. That is something that we didn't do here. That is another error. So you find that at the end of the day, if I'm to add these two figures, uh, this is this is twelve. At the end of the day, you will find that um, our bank balance here, this balance, is undercast by fifteen million two hundred thousand. Where does the fifteen million two hundred thousand come from? First, they didn't recognize we got the money. That was an error. They're supposed to have recognized it. And secondly, they deducted money from our bank in error. So the two compound to that figure. So it means that uh, this balance you're seeing here is less. It, it understates our true picture of the money in the bank by 15 million 200,000. So because it undercasts that money, and uh, we want to explain why this figure and that figure are not the same, it's in the, uh, in our bank reconciliation statement, we are only trying to, we, we respect what is in the bank. So since this error here makes our bank balance be undercast, and so, I think I realized I just made an error. Um, yes, we received, um, let's get back to that transaction. I'm very sorry about this, but it's just a minor error. So we had 7,600,000. This 7,600,000 is what we received, right? That is according to the question. Then the statement continues to say that instead the bank, the bank did debit six, seven million six hundred thousand it instead debited six million seven hundred this is supposed to be six million seven hundred it was an error right there the explanations before are still the same it's just this we received this money 7.6 but instead we debited 6.7 so our figures here are going to change let me do it here afresh so it's seven million six hundred thousand then six million seven hundred thousand when we add this to get the actual error this is three it's supposed to be fourteen three hundred so this is supposed to be fourteen three hundred here not this so when we add up this, we shall end up with 38104. So we subtract the two. When we subtract this and that, then we shall come up with the bank statement balance. So from there, we are able to arrive at 245641, and this so happens to be our bank balance. So when you look at this, this means that we have been able to reconcile our you know our cash book balance our adjusted cash book balance we've been reconciling we've been reconciled it to the bank statement balance and these right here are the explanations of why this is varying from that this brings us to the end of this session and thanks for watching be sure to share this session with your colleagues and don't forget to subscribe my name is Arnold Ranga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy take care Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. This is Arnold and I'm going to take you through this accounting question. It is quite long. It is adapted from a past paper question. I think that's why it is long. Um, so here's the question, let's get into the meat 
of the matter. The following information was obtained from the books of Pamoja General Enterprises. The accounts assistant left without notice in April of 2020 before preparing the bank reconciliation for the month of March 2020. So, this guy left in April, but before leaving, he had not prepared a bank reconciliation statement. And uh, I mean, he had not yet prepared a bank reconciliation statement for the month of March. However, when he was leaving, these are the items that were not reconciled. We have unpresented checks, uncredited checks, then we have the direct debits and the direct credits, as you can see. So, meaning, uh, right now, this is the information he leaves as at the month of March, but he left in April. This is March 2020. Unreconciled items for the month of, you know, March 2020. So um, the question goes ahead to show us the cash book for the month of April. The guy lived, left in April. So this is the cash book for the month of April. And of course, at the end of April, we went ahead and got a, a bank statement for the month of April. So this is what we have here. The debit, the credit, and then the balance, as you can see. It is quite long, as you can see, but um, right there. And uh, we end up with the balance in the bank, which is a bank overdraft of 606,000. All these figures that you're seeing here are in thousands. Yeah. Same with the figures that are in our cash book right here. They are all in thousands, okay? All these ones are in thousands. All right. And then the question continues to say that they are going to check number 8546 was dishonored and returned together with the bank statement at the end of April. And then also the bank made errors on this check and that check. And they are also continuing and telling us that any other error if found should be deemed to have occurred in the cash book. So in other words, as far as the bank statement is concerned, the only errors there are errors associated with this check and that check in case in the process of uh, doing this question we find any other errors we should consider them having taken place in the cash book so they are requiring us to find to prepare pamoja general enterprises uh books for pamoja enterprises for the end of april 2020 we should get an adjusted cash book then a bank reconciliation statement and that is exactly what we are going to do in today's session we are going to prepare an adjusted cash book and a bank reconciliation statement for Pamoja General Enterprises. So we are going to get started. This is not like the question we did in our previous session. With this one, in our previous section, uh, there were discrepancies. They gave us a section of discrepancies that these were the discrepancies that were discovered by the cashier and were required to analyze those discrepancies and prepare a bank reconciliation statement and an adjusted cash book. In this section, in this question, in today's session, the way this question has been asked, they have not given us the discrepancies. Instead, we are the ones supposed to find the discrepancies ourselves. Um, before we talk about discrepancies, uh, the issue, the question is, um, why do we even go ahead to find discrepancies? Um, I've given this background before that in an ideal world you see this is the bank statement right here and in our bank statement we are seeing that our balance here the bank balance is 606 and when you look at our cash book here when you look at our cash book our bar balance carried down is 7355 now here we are seeing 7355 here we are seeing 606 so these two balances are not the same in an ideal world, they are supposed to be the same, but they are not. Now, because they are not, it simply means that there are some transactions that took place here that were recorded in the bank statement that have not been reflected in the cash book. And uh, because of that, th now those are the discrepancies that we are going to go and look for. So in practice, what happens is that number one, we are supposed to get our bank statement and we look for any issues that any any transactions that are in the bank statement that were not reflected here so we look for the transactions if there are any transactions in the bank statement that were not reflected in the cash book then we shall go ahead and account or include those transactions in the adjusted cash book also 
in our investigation if we discover that there are some errors that were hand, that were made in the cash book then we shall go ahead and correct those errors in the adjusted cash book now in this cash book when we debit the cash book it means we have received money when we credit the cash book it means we have given out money now some sometimes when we receive money from the bank, it means it's going to come. We are going to record it as a check. So those are the checks you're seeing here. That sometimes we receive money from the bank and it is recorded on the debit side as a check that of so much money. Now, sometimes these checks that we have received, you may find that these checks that we have recorded here are not reflected in the bank statement. So if it so happens to be that the checks that we have received here have not yet been reflected in the bank statement, it simply means that that is a pending transaction. That whereas we have received this money, the bank has not yet credited it on our account. And because it has not yet credited it on our account, we call those checks uncredited checks. And uncredited checks are handled in the bank reconciliation statement. The same is true on the credit side. When we give out money using checks, like you're seeing here, we shall write in our cash book that we have given out money by writing it here. So when we give out that check and we record in our cash book that we've given out money, we expect that the money we have given, we, the, the, the checks we have given out to these, custom, to, to these suppliers of ours or creditors, when we give them these checks, they're supposed to go and present these checks to the bank that is to our bank, and when they present these checks, then we expect that money to be deducted from our bank. Now, in our investigations, if we find that some of the checks we issued out have not yet been reflected here, it only means that these people that we gave that money have not yet presented those checks to our bank so that the money is deducted. And it would mean that we, that money is still in the bank. It has not yet been deducted. So those kinds of checks are what we call unpresented checks. And because they have not been presented to the bank for the bank to remove the money from our, you know, from our account, we call them unpresented checks and unpresented checks are handled in the bank reconciliation statement. So um, all that is going to come up in our investigations. And also the other issue that is handled in our, in, in our the bank reconciliation statement are the errors that take place in the bank. The errors that take place in the bank are handled in the bank reconciliation statement. So with that overview, let's get started with the question now. Of course, like I said, we're going to first do some investigations by comparing what is here with what is here. But before we get to that, remember the question gave us some, ad some information. Remember, we have some baggage from last month. Here we are being required to to prepare a bank reconciliation statement and an adjusted cash book for the month of April. But remember, we have information from way back. We have some pending issues from the bank. Remember, this accountant left, as you can see here, this accountant left in March. And when he left in March, he left without reconciling, without preparing a bank reconciliation statement. So these are the items that have been unreconciled as at March. So we need to first deal, before we come to this, uh, let's first deal with these unreconciled issues and we see their impact on the current status quo. So what we have here is, uh, we have what we call an, an um, we have unpresented checks and uncredited checks as at March. Now, these unpresented checks and uncredited checks, we're supposed to look at them. And now, this is for as far as March is concerned, but now we have April right here. Let me remove this here. So we have April here. So the issue is that, okay, if these are the unpresented checks as at the end of the month of March, and if these ones are uncredited checks as far as March is concerned, do these checks, are they still unpresented and are they still uncredited even in April? Okay, somebody's making noise outside, these kids. So we need to ask ourselves that. So remember, unpresented checks and uncredited checks, these are simply transactions that are pending. They could 
go through, they could not. In other words, these checks could either mature or they could still still remain pending. So let's check. So we check for check number 8545. This is as at March. So we look at into the Apple, you know, bank statement here. We look for these checks and see whether they have been sorted. So unpresented checks, let's start with unpresented checks. If you look at the unpresented checks, these are checks that some of our suppliers have not yet given to the bank. So that is as at March. So question, in April, did they eventually present them? I think if you are to look through here, um, these check numbers, you'll see, actually this one here, you'll see that check number 85450, which is here, check number 85450, yeah, this check number eventually was presented, okay, because this was an unpresented check as at the month of March, but then during the month of April, it was presented and money was deducted from our account, so it means that this pending transaction has been resolved so let's tick it off even right here let me use a blue marker here this has been resolved so this check number eight this one has been resolved okay all right so this has been resolved but when we look through the bank statement for april here uh from what you can see the check number for you check number eight five four five eight does not exist here so that simply means that uh, this has not yet been resolved. So in other words, this is still an unpresented check. It is still, it has not yet been presented. So it's still an unpresented check. And so we shall handle it in the bank reconciliation statement for the month of April. Of April. So let's get to the uncredited checks. If you look through the uncredited checks here, if, you're to, if I'm to look through here, the bank statement here, um, looking at the bank statement, looking for check numbers here. Okay, let's look through here. I'm looking for any of these two figures, right? I think from here we can see that down here, we have check number 24631, 24631. At here, this check number, this check as at April 2020, this check was not yet credited. It was an uncredited check. In other words, they gave us money, we presented this check to the bank, and the bank had not yet credited our account with that much. But in April, the bank eventually credited our account with 843, okay? 843, check number that. So that simply means that this was also resolved. So meaning that this check is no longer an uncredited check, it has been resolved. However, uh, we still uh, have with this check 0671 or 462,000. It is still uncredited because even in the month of April, it is not reflected anywhere. So as far as the unresolved or unreconciled issues of March are concerned, we still have an uncredited check and an unpresented check. We shall handle this when we are dealing, dealing with the bank reconciliation statement as we come. Then we have these issues here. We have direct debits and direct credits. Now, direct debits and direct credits, these are transactions that happen in the bank, but we people that are in the business that are handling the cash book are not aware of. So these, these, these transactions are supposed to be reconciled or they are supposed to be reflected in the adjusted cash book because these things took place in the bank and we in the cash book they were not reflected so we handle these in the adjusted cash book so i think let's get started now with drafting the adjusted cash book and get started with this right away so we have the adjusted cash book right there um for the month of course, remember with the adjusted cash book, we shall first begin with the cash book balance first. So when we look at the cash book balance here, our cash book balance, here we have 7,355,000 7, right there. That's our cash book balance. Now, the mere fact that it is this side, this is a credit balance here. It is a credit balance. Because if it is a balance carried down and it is this side, it means that this side is bigger than this one this one by that amount so it means that down here ba balance brought down is this seven mil seven million three fifty five 
that's a bank overdraft so so it's a credit balance so we shall say uh, cash book balance now our cash book balance is seven million three hundred and fifty five please take note that our figures here are in thousands even the figures we shall be writing here in so it's a bank overdraft or a negative balance a negative cash balance right there seven million three hundred and fifty five so that's what we begin with from our cash so after that then let's straight away go to direct debits now direct debits if you look at ledger fees ledger fees these are fees that were deducted from our our bank from the bank you know ledger fees and remember in our cash book when we when we lose money or when money reduces we credit so we shall credit here ledger fees ledger fees here are 36000 then we have excise duty excise duty is four then we have direct credits direct credits means you know money that we received in our bank but was not reflected in the cash book so we received interest income and we also got a direct deposit in our bank of 1200 since this was money that came in in our bank it was not reflected in the cash book now that we've got the bank statement and we have gotten aware that these two were money deposited in the bank but not reflected in the cash book so we reflected it in the we now reflected it in the cash book by debiting it in the adjusted cash book balance so in mid here we shall come here and say so interest interest is 360 then we have the deposit direct deposit it's going to be 1200 like that so we have resolved this in the adjusted cash book what is remaining is just this and that we shall handle these issues in the bank reconciliation statement when the, it reaches time for us to do the bank reconciliation statement so now before we actually now we've finished this we have some extra information here too on this we finish that what is pending here is the the matters of bank reconciliation now let's look at this one also we are being told that check number 85460 was dishonored and returned together with the bank statement at the end of April 2020. So let's look for this check, 85460, that was dishonored. Where, um, where is it? Um, we Let's look in the cash book. So if we uh, look into the cash book, um, actually the check number 85460 is uh, here, 85460. This is the check number that was dishonored, this one. 85460 was dishonored. So by virtue of its position, first of all, if you look at it where it is, re it is recorded, it is recorded on the credit side. This check is recorded on the credit side of the, the 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 cash book this simply means that we are the ones who issued this check we issued it when we were paying someone okay so when we issued this check this check bounced and it was brought back to us so if this check bounced it means we're supposed to do the reverse of this posting when we were issuing it we credited this by two thousand two million four hundred thirty thousand so if it bounced it means we're supposed to reverse this by debiting it and so we are, we are going to do that in the adjusted cash book this is more like yeah a bounced check so we'll get to our adjusted cash book and we shall to cancel out this we debit since it bounced so we shall say bounced check so that's the bounced check two million four hundred and thirty so that has also been resolved so in other words we are resolving we have resolved this also so now we have back here the bank made errors on checks number this and that and any other error if found should be deemed to have occurred in the cash book so the bank made errors on this check and that check let's look for these checks let's look for them where they are so that we mark them because we are going to be uh, handling these checks when we are dealing with the bank reconciliation statement so let's look for those checks so here is our bank statement so we are looking for those checks that are having errors if you see here um, 
Yeah, we have the check 11023 that has an error. This is the check 11023. If you come here, that check is here, 11023. It has an error right here. So I'll simply put a small mark here to indicate that it is an error so that we do not, you know, mix it up. This is a lot of data. It's important you mark it. Then we also have check 85464. 85464, it is there. This check also has an error. Let me mark it like that. It has an error. So meaning that if these two checks are having errors, it means that the right the rightness of these checks shall be reflected in the cash book. So let's go to the cash book and look for these respective checks and see how are, how are they supposed to have been. So when we come to the cash book here, if you come look here, the check number 11023 that has an error. If you come here 11023, it's here. That is the check that has an error. In fact, let me call it bank error not to get confused so this is bank error that check so so this is an error this error was made in the bank but uh, as far as the cash book is concerned this is the right treatment it is a debit entry of 420,000, but the bank made an error then when we come to this check number 85464 right there 85464 is here 85464 85464 is here so if the bank made an error on this check. It means that this is the right treatment for that check in the cash book. So let me just call this bank error. So it means that as far as this write-up is concerned, we have identified these checks and we know where the errors are. Now we will come, we shall come to this when we're dealing with the bank reconciliation statement to sort these errors out. So right now, Let's go on and, and uh, now start comparing our bank statement with our cash book. And now let's look for the discrepancies. Now we are investigating the discrepancies. So remember this cash book is only reflecting the bank column of the cash book. Okay. So um, like I keep saying in an ideal world, uh, whatever is here, this is the debit side of the cash book. The debit side of the cash book should have the same information with the credit side of the bank. Likewise, the credit side of the cash book should have the same information with the debit side of the bank. The reason as to why the two flip, this one is debit and this is credit, while this is credit and this is debit, that, that was explained earlier. I will not go into that now. So we shall begin. Of course, we, should, we can ignore the balance brought forward. This is balance brought forward from the previous, you know, um, from, from the month of March. And this is the unreconciled balance brought forward. So let's move on. Uh, we have uh, check number 6750, which is right there. So we have this check number 6750, 6750. So this is okay. We have this. It's okay. Uh -huh. Then we go ahead. Check number 10843. 10843. So this one is also okay. We have check number um, 91084. I will look for it here. We have check number one nine nine one zero eight four right here. You know uh, nine one zero eight four. Well, it does not appear anywhere here. So nine one zero eight four does not appear anywhere here. It means that this is a check that we received. We gave it to the bank, and the bank has not yet. You know, it has not yet credited it. So this is an uncredited check. So this is an uncredited check. It means it has not yet been credited in our, on our statement. We expect this figure to be in this column of the credit side right here on this column, but it's not. So it's an uncredited check. Also, uh, we are able to see here there is a cash deposit of 560. This cash deposit of 560 uh, definitely it does not, you know, it does not reflect in our cash book here. So it means this is a direct deposit. 
and remember direct deposits are handled in the adjusted cash book this uncredited check is will be handled in the bank reconciliation statement so we shall come to that later so this is a direct deposit so let's handle it straight away so i'll come to one my, my cash book here and i'll say direct deposit this is a, a direct cash deposit of 560 five, six, zero. okay so this has also been resolved so we proceed so this is an uncredited check this is a bank error right there we shall handle this bank error in the bank reconciliation statement then we come here check number 4214 let's see here so if you look at this check number this is check number 4214 which is 1560 it's the same check here 4214 as you can see this is 6150 this is 1560 now remember what the question told us it told us uh, we can clearly see that this is an error by the way because uh this is this check number 4214 is it's debited here on uh, it's debited it's debited uh in the cash book so if it is debited in the cash book we expect it to be credited you know we expect it to be in this credit column right here of the bank reconciliation of the bank statement but instead it's not so it's supposed to be credited here but instead that same check number of 4214 instead it is debited so it means one of these two is wrong one of these two has an error but according to the question as far as errors in the bank statement are concerned remember we we, we identified only this check and that check they are the only two checks that ha, have errors in the bank statement it means and the question and, and we were told that any other error that we find should be deemed to be it's here any other error if found should be deemed to have occurred in the cash book so it means in this case the error here is here it means that it's the bank that is correct so the error is here in the cash book so if the error is in the cash book how do we correct that error we correct that error by first cancelling out the error for example here this is check number 4214 it was you know uh, it was 1560 so it is it's a debit we're supposed to first cancel out this by crediting by this same amount after cancelling it out then we do the correct thing now the correct thing here is you know this is a debit entry or uh, the, the according to the bank it is a debit of 6150 so if it is a debit in the bank of 6150 it means it's supposed to be a credit in the cash book of the same amount let me do some side work to do this error to analyze that error so that we are able to get the net figure so this error took place in the cash book and now let me draw a t account now in the cash book we have an error there is an error on this check and it is 1560 so we went ahead and um, debited 1560 that is what we did in the cash book however we have been able to in, in our investigation we were able to discover that we did it in error we are supposed to have done 6150 on the credit side so what does that mean it means we're supposed to first cancel this one out we cancel it by you know this was a debit right so we cancel it by crediting doing the reverse crediting that figure 1560 then after canceling this out then we go ahead and do the right thing and the right thing is to go ahead and credit this check number 4214 by that the correct figure which so happens to be 6150 so this is what we're supposed to be doing in the adjusted cash book and when we do this when you add these two figures because you, you you've, you've you've credited this then credited that in the cash book so we want to take one figure to the cash book so it means so 
it means in, in total you are going to credit your cash book by seven thousand seven million seven hundred and ten thousand and so that's what you're going to go and take to your adjusted cash book right here and you should come here and say error in the cash book that is the cash book error it is seven thousand seven hundred and ten so you have cleared that error and so when you clear this error it means this tool is also okay it's now cleared so we continue this check number has been cleared check number 4214 this check number 4214 has been cleared so we are we are following i guess we're following so we have check number 39014 with a figure there of 670 if you see check number 39014 if i come to my bank statement and look for th that check number through my bank statement here you realize that it's not there so because it is not there it means that this is a check that we received we took it to the bank and the bank has not yet credited it so this becomes an uncredited check so let's look for check number 7745 of this amount i come to my bank statement and look for that as well here check number 7745 and you realize that that check number actually does not exist also it's not here in our my bank statement so it means this one also has not yet been credited so this is an uncredited check check number triple eight one six let me look for it here check number triple eight one six check number triple eight one six is also not there so because it's not there it's also an uncredited checks and these uncredited checks we shall handle them in the bank reconciliation statement so from here you can see that this has been swept we have swept this so let's look for any other issues here in the bank remember whatever is here on the debit side should appear on in the credit column now we have cleared all these checks and whatever now we are going to come and see are there any things in the credit column here in the bank that are not here in the cash book so when we come here we ticked this off ticked that off ticked this off then here we have check number 00631 if you look at check number 00631 yeah okay it is supposed to be here okay but it's not so let's look for this check 00631 in our entire cash book is it reflected anywhere because this shows that we received money we are supposed to have received that money in this side but it has not been reflected there so let's look for it across when you look for it you find that check number 00631 is reflected here 00631 here so you find that the check number 00631 is a credit it's in the credit column here okay it's in the credit column uh, check number 00631 is in the credit column but also it's on the credit side of the cash book so it means there is an error because if it is on the credit side here it's, if it's in the credit column of the bank statement it's supposed to be on the debit side of the cash book but if it is on the credit one of these two is wrong but remember according to our question we were only told that as far as the bank statement is concerned it is only these two that have errors so it means that if we find any other errors we should deem them to have occurred in the cash book so in this case it means that this right here 00631 this entry is wrong it's having an error so let's examine that error so let me i like to examine this error separately just to put things in perspective let me call this uh you know the cash book because that's where the error takes place from so in this cash book here we are having um the right thing is uh, this check number 00631 is here this 00631 uh it's support is is it's a credit entry of 3203 but instead of this 3203 instead we are having you know a credit entry of this of this here so it means that this was posted wrongfully and so because it was posted wrongfully we need to first cancel this out so to cancel this out if this this was a debit 
we are supposed to credit it so that we cancel it out. So to cancel it out, it means uh, that check number 00631 is first cancel it out by canceling out that figure, which is 3,200 and I mean 3,230,000. We cancel that error out. So after canceling that error out, now let us do the right thing. And the right thing is that this was, you know, check number this is a credit entry in the bank. So if it's a credit entry in the bank, it is supposed to have been a debit entry in the cash book. So the debit entry of this same check was supposed to be 3,203. So in other words, when you see these two, I first cancel it out, then I do the right thing. When you do the two, you find that you are debiting it twice just to correct that error. So the net effect here, when we add those two figures is going to be, so the net net effect is 64, six, four, three, three. So it means to correct that error on this check, we are going to make a debit entry on the adjusted cash book of 6,433,000. So that's what we're going to do in our adjusted cash book right here. We shall come here and say error on this check, error on check number double zero, Six three one. We debit six thousand four hundred and thirty-three. I mean six million four hundred and thirty-three thousand, because all these figures are in thousands. So that has been resolved. So you find that this uh, issue here, this this. Uh, this figure here has been resolved on the debit side so we have interest income of 240,000 so this is resolved then we have this commission also commission income commission income is 360 so this has been resolved all right, then when you look down at, so when you look through this credit side, everything has been resolved. Um, if you come down here, this this is an this figure has an error. We shall handle it in the bank reconciliation, and this one was also resolved at the beginning of the video. It's now time for us to now look at you know the debit uh, the credit side of the cash book. The credit side of the cash book should coincide with the debit column of the bank statement the two should coincide they should have the same figure so let's get started here we have the check clearance fee right here we have the check clearance fee right there and uh, it's 1000 here yeah it's 1000 i had already ticked that off this is also 1000 right there that is solved excise duty excise duty on the debit size the excise duty is 1000 right 100 oh yeah 100 it's already ticked off and when we come here it's also 100 it's already ticked off then we have here check number you see we're looking at the debit column right here the debit column so check number 85461 check number 85461 it's 8400 even here it's 8400 it's all good so we come through here checkbook replacement fee of course this was a fee that was charged in the bank checkbook replacement fee is 20 and when we come here there is no such thing as 20 and there is no such thing as checkbook replacement fee so what does this mean this means this is like a direct debit so we it means we're supposed to debit the uh, we're supposed to credit our cash book we do that in the adjusted cash book here. So that is, uh, what is it called? Checkbook replacement fee. So we shall say checkbook replacement fee. And the checkbook replacement fee here is 20. So we shall come here and say 20. Okay, that is cleared. So we have... Uh, 
this is a check check number this has an error so we shall deal with that error in the bank reconciliation statement then we have ledger fees 36 we do not have come and check here we do not have anything like ledger fees on this side so we shall come here and include it here ledger it's 36 then we proceed so this has been cleared we have excise duty ledger fees there are three and come here uh, are they there they are not at all here so excise duty so this one is solved right there then we can proceed and say um, here we have check number that or oh, this is an error in the bank we are going to handle that in the bank reconciliation statement then we have a standing order that is three uh, these standing orders are direct debits so we credit here we say standing order its value is three So we have one final figure to look at. We have, uh, yeah, we finished the standing order of three. So this standing order is already resolved. And now we get to look at, uh, you know, the loan repayment right there. We have loan repayment of, uh, you know, 8,700,000. So finally, we have uh, in the debit column right here, in the bank statement, we have down here we have the uh you know the loan repayment eight thousand seven hundred and if you are to compare that to our credit side of the cash book it's not there yeah it's not there loan repayment is not there so we deal with that in the you know adjusted cash book so i'll come here and say loan repayment And the loan repayment here, um, this is eight thousand eight means not eight thousand seven hundred, but rather eight million seven hundred thousand. So this is eight million seven hundred thousand, since the figures are in thousands. So this is sorted. So from uh, what we can see here in our bank statement, uh, we can already see that every figure has pretty much been ticked off. And the figures that have not been ticked off, for instance, this one, this figure is associated with an error that we are going to handle in the bank reconciliation statement. This figure here is associated with an error that we are going to handle in the bank reconciliation statement. But the rest of the figures have been ticked off, so meaning that the bank statement has been cleared. Now let's get to the gaps that are in the cash book. So looking at the cash book, we are still handling the credit side. And if you see the credit side, there are some figures. This was an error. This this figure was resolved. This was an error of check number 00631. It was resolved. Uh, however, we have some other uh, things that were not resolved. We have this. Um, check number this. You know, already we in the bank statement, nothing. We've ticked off every figure. So it means these checks are... Uh, if they since they're on the credit side, it means that they were issued, but they have simply not yet been, you know, presented by the people we gave them to. They've not yet presented them to our bank so that this money is deducted. So it means that this is an unpresented check, unpresented check. This is a bank error. This is also an unpresented check. This is also an unpresented check, unpresented check. In other words, all these checks that I'm calling unpresented. They are, they, they are not they are not anywhere here so that's how we're able to know they are unpresented so we have you know analyzed both the bank statement and the cash book and we have been able to identify the discrepancies that are there in both books and now after identifying those discrepancies we have in the process of identifying these discrepancies we have 
you know, prepared our adjusted cash book. And our adjusted cash book has essentially been that we find anything that is not in the bank statement and it's supposed to be in the cash book. We put it in the cash book, but we do that through the adjusted cash book. That's what we've been doing. And when there were any errors that we identified in the cash book, those errors are what we corrected in the adjusted cash book. Now it's time for us to balance off the adjusted cash book. side is bigger than the debit side by 12 million two hundred eighty-four thousand, and this so happens to be a bank overdraft so we have balanced it off now let's get to preparing the bank reconciliation statement and of course when we are preparing the bank reconciliation statement we are going to begin with the adjusted cash book balance and in this case our adjusted cash book balance is this since it's a bank overdraft, it means that we are going to we are going to put it as a, a negative figure right there. It's right here. So our adjusted cash book balance in this case it's going to be twelve million. So it's we shall say twelve to eight four. All figures here are in thousands even here will be in thousands so if you have to look at our bank statement here looking at our bank statement we are able to see that our balance is a bank overdraft of six hundred and six thousand so it means that as we are doing our bank reconciliation statement here we are starting from this figure and whatever we're going to add and subtract we're supposed to end up with this figure here down here so um let's get started uh of course with an adjusted cash book balance we have that as a bank overdraft negative 12 million 284 thousand so we are going to go ahead and add the money that we had subtracted from here because we we had given it away and these are what we call the unpresented checks so we are going to add the unpresented checks right there so let's get back to where we find them so looking at the unpresented checks let's get back to our cash book right here looking at our cash book uh, our unpresented checks are these ones that we have labeled UPC 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 these are the unpresented checks so let's first put those ones out of the way so we have unpresented check number 85462 this is 85462 this is an unpresented check amounting to 26500 Then we have, this one is okay, then we have check number 85467, it is 5670. Then we have check number 85466. Then this, this is okay. This is 1,400. Then we have this one, 85469. It is 1,020. Like that. Of course, all these figures are in thousands, right? Yeah. So uh, 1 million, 20,000, 1 million, 400,000, 5 million, 670,000, 26 million, 500,000. So these ones are all sorted. Now remember from our previous month, we had an un unresolved issues. This is the time we pull them out. So from the previous month, we also had this as an unpresented check. Check 85458. And this is 760. This has also been resolved. So we have put all our unpresented checks there. And of, of course, the next slot is for any errors. Let's first leave that. Let's first resolve the checks. Then we shall come back to the errors. So we add the unpresented checks. Then we reduce the uncredited checks. So for the uncredited checks, let's begin with this one from the previous month. The uncredited check here, we have this one from the previous month. 
that is still uncredited up to this month, which is check number 0671. It is amounting to 462. This one is resolved. So it means all the information from the previous month has been resolved. So we keep this away. Then we come and look for more uncredited checks. From here, we're able to label this as an uncredited check. So we have this one here, check number 91084. is an uncredited check that is amounting to 2500. We have this one here, check number 39014. It is six seven zero. Then we have this one seven seven four five. This is six eight nine zero. Then we have here triple eight. Then we have four two one zero. Like that. So um, so these ones are also been resolved. Okay, so we have resolved the unpresented checks, the uncredited checks. The reason as to why we add the unpresented checks and why we reduce the uncredited checks, I have, think I have over repeated myself on that matter in the previous sessions. I will not go into that in this very session. So now what is remaining are the errors. So let's look at the errors. Now uh, remember, we're going to analyze error by error and um, now we're looking at errors that happened in the bank. And according to the question, we were told that we were told that the bank made errors on checks number this and that. Any other error if found should be deemed to have occurred in the cash book. Now, the errors that we found that were deemed to have been, uh, you know, carried out in the cash book. We already resolved them in the adjusted cash book. Now it's time for us to deal with these two errors that happen in the bank. Now we are going to analyze these two errors and here is going to be the reasoning behind. Remember, as we are doing this bank reconciliation statement, our aim here is to make sure that we are coming from this figure here of, you know, the adjusted cash book balance, which is 12 million. 284,000 and we're supposed to make sure that as we come down here our final figure should coincide with the bank statement figure right there which is 606,000 so um, if we realize that in our analysis of the error the error increases the bank or overstates the bank statement balance then we shall do the same we add if the error reduces the bank statement balance we shall come here and do the same so what I'm with what we're trying to say or if we may look at it this in this other way is this that we are having this figure up here as our bank statement balance and our bank statement balance here doesn't have the errors the banks have so if there are any errors in the bank then we are going to either add or subtract in such a way as to make sure that this figure is eventually reconciled to this. So if there's an error in the bank that causes the bank statement balance to, you know, over inflate or increase, it increases the, the error increases the bank statement balance, then we shall also increase the adjusted cash book balance by adding that error here. If we are having a bank error, an error in the bank statement that is reducing you know the bank statement balance then we are going to go ahead and do the same here now this is of course particular to this approach where we start the the, the format is like this where we first have unpresented checks here and uncredited checks of course there are other approaches to designing a bank reconciliation statement where sometimes you, you people use different formats but the reasoning is pretty much the same According to the question, the errors that were made in the bank were errors on checks number 11023 and checks number 85464. And it is these two checks were circled out at the beginning when we were just starting out with this question. So these are the errors of this check and that check. 
So if these are the errors, when we check in this, you know, cache book, you're able to see that check number 11023 is reflected here as a debit entry and check number 85464 is reflected here as a credit entry. What is in the cash book as far as these checks are concerned is what is correct. So what is in the bank statement as far as these two checks are concerned is what is the error. So we are going to look at the truth that is by examining what happened in the cash book and then from there we will be able to examine and see what should have been done in the bank statement and uh, what was done for us to be able to gauge the error now when it comes to errors in the bank statement we look for the effect of that error on the bank statement balance remember we said that this cash book balance and the bank statement balance those two are supposed to agree now if those two are not agreeing and the reason as to why they are not agreeing is because there is an error in the bank statement then we need to find what the effect of that error is is the effect of that error increasing the bank statement balance or is the effect of that error reducing the bank statement balance so from knowing the effect of this error in the bank statement, then we will be able to position the error appropriately. Now, according to this format, we have started with, with, with the bank statement balance. We have started with the um, adjusted cash book balance. So now if the error in the bank statement is such that it is increasing the bank statement balance, then it means that we shall add that error to this cash book balance since that error does not exist in this balance so we shall add it here and if the error is such that it reduces the bank statement balance or it undercasts the cash uh, the bank statement balance then we shall come and put that error here to reduce it so that you know this figure you know eventually agrees with what we have in the bank statement so let's get started with the first error and analyze it. We have uh, like error for check number 11023. So when you look at error 11023, and um, that is what we have here. So what we have here is the correct thing in the cash book. And the cash book says that 420,000 is a debit entry. So if 420,000 is a debit entry, it means we received money. If we received money, it means that it should be reflected in our bank as well, that we received money. And if you come to the bank and see what happened in the bank instead, on that check, they're supposed to have put that 420,000 here to show that we received money. But they didn't do that. Instead, they reduced the money. Let me, let me repeat it again. We received money in our business, 420,000. Uh, minus that check of 110. The bank was supposed to add that money, credit our bank with that money, but the bank didn't do it. Instead, it reduced the, our account by that same amount. So this is the effect of this error on this bank statement. Let me do it here. This is what is supposed to, this is the bank. This is what the bank did. So we get money here. 420,000. So it means we have more money by 420. But what happens is that the bank does not, you know, credit our account. It does not add this 420 to our account. So that means that already in our bank, we, um, we have a shortage of 420. Yeah. So uh, there is a shortage of 420 because you know they they think they uh we have a shortage of 420 so as far as our bank is concerned we have a shortage of 420 thousand we are having firstly the shortage of 420 thousand because the bank did not credit did not credit that 420 when we received it that's the first step now on top of us not on top of the bank not uh you know crediting our account with 420 it goes ahead and erroneously debits our bank account in other words it erroneously reduces our account further with another 420 
So first of all, our balances are not agreeing because we have recognized that we got 420 here. Here they have not recognized it. So it means that our bank statement has a shortage of 420. But to go beyond that, they go ahead and make another shortage of 420,000. So it is a two-way thing. First, the four, first 420 was they didn't recognize it. Then the next 420, they deducted money from our bank account erroneously. So it means it is producing an overall shortage in the bank of 840,000. So what does that mean? It means that as far as this check 11023 is concerned, there is an overall shortage of 840,000 in the bank. Yeah. So this 840,000 shortage in the bank is is it is what is is reflected here. By the time we arrive at this bank statement balance, there is a shortage of 840,000. However, this shortage it is not it is it is not the case with our cash book. Our cash book is okay. It is our bank that is having this shortage. So it means that as far as our bank reconciliation statement is concerned, we say this is our adjusted cash book balance right there. Now, because we want to 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 move to agree with what to arrive at the bank statement balance, so it means that if there was a shortage in the bank statement, it means we are going to reduce to do the same here. So in this case here, we are going to say uh, we are going to subtract less the error. So we shall say less error in bank error on this on the check number one one zero two three we already saw that it is what eight hundred and forty so this is eight hundred and forty Again, I am reducing this. I am saying it is the bank statement. This one doesn't have a shortage, but since in the bank there is a shortage, so we are going to say it is the bank statement balance minus that money. So let's proceed. So this error has been sorted. This check has been sorted. It has been resolved. So now we have another one here. We have uh, here, check number 85464. So we come here, 85464 is right there. So what is in the cash book is what is correct. So 85464 is 5,400. This being on the credit side means that we, we gave out money, right? That is what it means. We gave out money amounting to 5,400,000. ,400 so if we gave out money, we expect that in the bank, they're supposed to debit our account here, right there. So we give out money here. Let me position this like this so that it's clear. Uh, I hope you're able to tell the distinction. We give out money, 5,400,000 against that check. And that is what is here, 85464 4, right there. If this was is a, de a credit entry, this was supposed to be debit, but they, do, they didn't do it. Instead, they added us money. Now let's analyze this error. Does it create a shortage or an excess? Let's do it here. So this is the right thing, right? This is a credit entry of 5,400,000 right there. So it means that in our bank, it was supposed to have been debited. In other words, the bank is supposed to have reduced our money by 5,400,000 because this shows that we gave out money. So the bank is supposed to have, you know, uh, it, it's supposed to have reduced the money by debiting, but the bank did not. So since the bank did not do it, it means that the bank has an excess of 500,000. 5, the bank has an excess of 5,400,000. That is the first discrepancy now. Let me repeat it again. Here, we have a credit entry of 5,400,000.
This credit entry means that we gave out money worth 5,400,000. So if we gave out money worth 5,400,000, it means that our money in the business, in the cash book, reduced. So we expect the bank to also go ahead and reduce our money accordingly. Now, the bank did not do that. So because the bank did not do that, it means that in our bank, we already have an excess of money that we gave out but was not deducted from our account of 5,400,000. So that is an excess. That's the first level, meaning that we have more money in the bank than in the cash book. That's the first step. But now that now this second step. So on top of the bank not debiting our account or on top of the bank not reducing this money, meaning that the bank has an excess of 5,400,000, the bank instead went ahead and credited our account with respect to that check. So it didn't deduct this money, but instead it went ahead and added us more money in the bank. So on top of not taking away this money, which shows that now we have an excess of 5.4 million, um, 5 million compared to what we have in the cash book, it added us more money. So meaning that we, it added us more money worth 4 million 500,000. It added us more money erroneously. So you find that as a result of the errors around this check, the bank balance, this balance, has an excess of these two combined. I, I hope you get what I mean. So when you add the two, you end up with nine. That is nine. Is that so? Yeah. So it means that in our bank, we have an excess of 9,900,000. So it means our bank statement has an error where that causes the bank statement balance to overshoot by 9.9 .9 million. So because our bank statement balance here is overshooting by 9.9 .9 million, this is exactly what we shall come and do here. This is our bank uh, adjusted cash book balance. So we shall go ahead and add that excess here. So we shall come here and say error. 9 million, 900. So I think that has also been resolved. So we have resolved the two bank errors. So after resolving the two bank errors, now we are going to go ahead and, uh, you know, do the rest of the math. The arithmetic here should lead us to the bank statement balance right here. So we shall start with the additions. So when we add this, we end up with 45. So this adjusted cash book balance plus this should be able to give us a figure here. Now, remember, this is a bank overdraft. It's a negative. So it means when you're punching it in your calculator, you just put a negative figure. Negative plus this to give us an answer here. This gives us 32. 966. Then we shall add up this, get an answer there. Here, since this is less, it means that we're supposed to subtract this figure. And when we subtract this minus that, then we shall end up with this bank statement balance, which is 606, and it's a negative figure. And now this bank statement balance 606 coincides with our bank statement balance here. And so it means it only means that our bank reconciliation statement is correct it is correctly reconciling you know our adjusted cash book balance to the bank statement balance so that's it we have answered the questions we have prepared the adjusted cash book balance and the bank reconciliation statement like this video if you like it don't forget to subscribe check out other awesome accounting lectures on this channel and as always guys thank you very much for watching always 
feel free to always give your feedback in the comment section below it it could go a long way in helping me get better at serving you my name is Arnold Rangakuramia this is Kisembo Academy take care